and welcome Armstrong Stadium here in Hampton, Virginia. Just moments away from kickoff here for Big South football here on a beautiful 70 degree cloudy fall day here in coastal Virginia. Matt White will be joined by my broadcast colleague Travis Oliver here momentarily. But we are featuring a matchup today between the two newest members of the Big South Conference in the Hampton Pirates and the Lions of North Alabama. Now, as I said, they're both new members of the Big South. However, North Alabama making that transition from D2 to Division I, both this game and next year's contest will be considered non-conference, so they will not reflect in the actual Big South Conference standings. However, still an opportunity here Travis for two teams who haven't played each other since they were both in D2 back in the early 90s to reacquaint themselves. Yeah, the Pirates and uh, and the Lions looking here to kind of get back uh, get back to normalcy for both teams. The Pirates coming off uh, a big loss to Liberty a couple weeks ago have kind of two weeks to kind of stew on that loss and uh, get back to basics as they prepare for this Lions team where the Lions are coming in off a big win last week over Presbyterian. Like you said, it was a conference opponent but it wouldn't count as a conference win for him but to kind of get familiar with the conference get familiar with the teams and to open up with a win like that um, i think for them um it's kind of a good building block for them moving forward um as they look to transition here um into the big south that's right a good start for north alabama take a look at both teams record on the year elizabeth city was the first opponent for the Pirates, starting off at 65-7, to Pirates actually broke a Big South Conference record for most points in a debut with that victory. However, the Pirates welcome Virginia Union back here to Armstrong Stadium for the first time in almost 20 years. And Union came away with a big upset, 36-17. to Then the Pirates traveled to Chicago, my broadcast colleague's hometown, and the renewal of the age-old rivalry, the Battle of the Real HU, where the Pirates came away with the 41 to 20 victory. And then as previously mentioned, Liberty last, uh, excuse me, two weeks ago, 62, 27 victory for the Flames. And then for the Lions, they got their first win as they begin this transition to D1 over Western Illinois, 26 to 17 back on August the 29th. Then traveled to Montana, had a tough loss there, 61 to 17 on the 14th took on Alabama A&M, who's ironically coached by the Pirates' former head coach, Connell Maynard Jr. That team came away with the victory 31-24, to did A&M. And last week against Jackson, or excuse me, two weeks ago, Jacksonville State, 30-12 uh, to loss. And as mentioned before, Presbyterian, a 41-21 victory for the Lions. And when you look at that schedule, you look at Northern Alabama, North Alabama's schedule, they played uh, some pretty... Uh, perennial powers in the FCS level when you look at Jacksonville State uh, and Western Illinois and even Montana. Montana, who at some one point was a dominant force in the FCS level of uh, football. Um, so they they jumped, jumped into Division 1AA or FCS uh, looking to kind of get going. So this will be a good test, I think, for the Pirates uh, as they look to kind of really get things going back going for them. Um, in the Big South in their quest to kind of uh, win the conference and, and move into the playoffs. Uh, but they'll have a good task ahead of them. Uh, when you look at you look at North Alabama's offense, uh, Christian Lopez, who has had been doing, having a pretty good year passing the ball, and that's what, like, where the, the Lions are looking to kind of hang their hats. But the Pirates really have to hold up in the secondary, and they're going to have some opportunities to make some plays as, um, as Lopez has gained a lot of yards in the air. Um, he has some pretty good guys outside, but he's only 47, completing 47, 48 percent of his passes. So that's telling you that there are opportunities for the Pirates to make the play, make some plays. So that's going to be a big key today. Watching these two teams, can the Pirates capitalize on the mistakes he makes? That's right. These are two teams looking to rebound, looking to put another victory on the record. Pirates two and two. North Alabama two and three. Coach Willis in his second season, nine and six overall. Robert Prunty in his second year as well, ten and five overall. So you're really looking at two programs here, T.O., that are beginning to 
uh, match the uh, the attitude, the style of play that their coaches are, have brought to these two programs. Uh, Robert Prunty coming to Hampton from East Carolina, bringing in some structure, uh, some high-powered offense, as we talked about earlier with uh, the quarterback, France, uh, DeAndre Francois, uh, Jadakus Bonds, just so many talented players come in here with Robert Prunty. And you can almost say the same thing with Willis, putting his stamp on that North Alabama program. And when you look at it, they've kind of gone about it two different ways that have been effective for them. Prunty with the F FBS um, experience has been able to get some, some transfers in and get some guys in to kind of get, the, all, get this thing going really quickly for the Pirates. So there was really no rebuilding period here. Uh, from him he kind of jumped right in and got things going right away well willis has kind of been with that program since their dominance in division two um and he just he was promoted from within and kind of was able to again put his stamp on it but kind of continue with what they've been doing so two different ways of building their program but both ways have been effective for both coaches that is right well put my friend as we are now set and ready for the kickoff it will be hampton Receiving nice end over end kick will be returned across the 10 of the 15 to the 20, blocking across 25, across the 30. Knocked out of bounds to the Pirates is Will Eason, the redshirt junior, but about the 33 yard line, I see a uh, penalty flag. So we'll look to see the call here against Hampton. It was a nice kick there from Gurley. Return, number 24, return team. Take out penalty. So they're going to charge Devontae Davis, a redshirt freshman out of North Carolina, with holding on the return. So the officials have the ball marked back right now at the 20-yard line. And it looks like that's where the Pirates will start their first drive here in the month of October. And this is going to be interesting how the Pirates attack uh, this UNA defense. Does a lot with their safety. They play a lot of quarters coverage. So their safeties are involved in a lot of the run game, stopping the run. And I know that's going to be big for the Pirates getting their run game underway right away. Pirates start out with the play action. Francois is going to lay it out. It's a back and forth battle between Jadakis Bonds. And it looked like that was number, I think that was number five. That might have been Hart there in coverage. Well, Jadakiss has to do a better job of, of fighting for his quarterback. He almost like he didn't want to get a flag, so he kind of eased up. But he has to really work hard to make sure because the cornerback there, number four, uh, Singleton, Singleton had a great chance at that ball. Um, and Jadakiss kind of just, the Bonds just kind of just let it go like he didn't think he could make a play on it. But he has to do a better job of fighting for that ball for his quarterback. Yeah. Bonds having a great season, one of the leaders in the country in touchdown receptions more on that later but here on second down we've got a flag and looks like a false start will be the call against hampton and that's not a good sign this is the third play of the game technically for the pirates you've already had 15 yards and penalties uh, setting up a second and long and really getting you out of your groove offensively So this is going to be a key here again. Not try to get it all back on the first, on this play, but hopefully get a good enough chunk where you can uh, make it third and manageable. Francois looks right, has the receiver, and he's brought down immediately shy of the 20-yard line. That was Dana. Bracey sitting there again. They're playing that quarters cover, so those corners are kind of they're not being challenged. They're going to be sitting on that those those routes. Did a great job of driving it, but now we got a third and ten here for the Pirates. Um, be key to see what they come out here with, how they challenge them as the Lions look like they're going to line up in some form of uh, man coverage here they brought in their nickel package. It's going to be third down here for Hampton, back near the original line of scrimmage at the 20. Four receivers set. Francois got McKenzie with him in the backfield. Looking left, throws to his left, and it is complete across the 44. First down. Safety, I believe, tried to make a play on the ball, missed time to jump, and Catlett gets more than enough for a first down here for the Pirates. Yeah, and that's the thing about that two-man. You're playing that corner underneath, and he's trying to drive anything, any outbreaking or in-breaking routes. He's undercutting it. The DB undercut it, missed the ball, and when he makes that catch, there's nobody there to stop him. Um, great call there and great execution by the Pirates. Ball in the 43. Four receiver set. Play action. 
pass to the tight end, loses his balance, but he's able to pick up a good chunk of yards there. That was Powell. With a great one-headed catch there to, on top of that. Cummings on the top, second down. Second and five for the Pirates. This time it will be a handoff to McKenzie. Lions look to have him wrapped up in the backfield, but good effort to keep moving his legs. He might have got back to the line of scrimmage, bringing up third down. It's a great job of turning a negative into a positive there, because that easily could have been a four-yard loss for the Pirates. Uh, Sean McKenzie, who um, the Pirates definitely need to get him going um, here in this game or in, and just moving forward to really be effect as effective as they want to be offensively. Pirates need to get to the line, 48-yard line, if they want to extend this drive. Man in motion is Catlett. Pressure coming. They get it to the running back out of the backfield, and he's got plenty of green in front of him. Nearly runs through an arm tackle near the 25-yard line. Great job by William Robinson, the sophomore out of Smithfield, making a play for the Pirates out of the backfield through the air attack. And this is one of the places I was curious as how the Pirates were going to do versus this this UNA defense, uh, the UNA defense only giving up 35% of conversions on third down. The Pirates already have two on third down. They go back to Robinson this time on the run. He'll be pulled down just shy of the 20. And the Pirates are doing a lot of things scheme-wise to attack that quarters coverage, getting that, and that's one of the things, that's the weakness in that coverage, getting that back out on the wheel route. If that linebacker's not there, if he gets pulled away, he... Um, there's no one there to take him in great execution so far by the Pirates on offense. Francois in shotgun takes a snap, looks to Jadakus Bond, pick up a handful of yards before he's wrapped up by several Lion defenders. Speaking of Jadakus Bonds, you know, coming into this week, he's one of the leaders in the FCS division in receiving touchdowns with seven, and he's second in all of Division One behind uh, Aesop Winston out of Washington State. So Jadakus Bonds making a big impact for the Pirates. Well, it's good to have him out there for if you're Francois. You're talking about a kid who's 6'4", um, good frame. He has good hands and um, good speed to get behind the secondary. Uh, so he, he's not a bad target for Francois and a great safety valve when you need to get rid of the ball. As we have Catley here around the corner breaking a few tackles down inside the five-yard line. Um, as the Pirates look at second to goal and looking to come away with a score here on this first drive. One of the things you have to love about this offense for a Hampton Teal is the fact that they can get the ball to so many different weapons in so many different ways. Catlin normally lines up as a receiver that time on the run. Go back to the traditional run here and a great job by the D-line. Well, at least initially it looked like they stopped. Shem McKenzie, but there was no whistle, and he got up and ran into the end zone, waiting for the official call. Looks like they're going to mark him at the line of scrimmage. So it looked like they're saying he might have put the ball on the ground, but he was already down by contact as he tried to pick it up uh, and, and run into the end zone there. Big third, uh, big Second down here, uh, Pirates looking to punch this thing in. Another play to the Dana. Dana tries to extend it across the goal line, and there's flags at the end of the play. Looks like it's going to be a face mask. And it looked like he might have pointed at that as Dana on the stiff arm. He might have got some face masks on that stiff arm. Yeah, two officials threw the flag, so we'll wait here for the official call. Personal foul, face mask, defense, pass the distance to the goal, and an automatic. Well, if you're a Pirate fan, it worked out for you. It is against the Lions, so the half distance to the goal, automatic first down results in minimal yardage, but more importantly for Hampton, gives you a fresh set of downs to punch this over the goal line. It looks like they're lining up in a quarterback sneak here, and everybody knows it's coming. Uh, with the, the legalization of the Bush push. The Bush push, yes. And we'll call it the McKenzie push that time. <laughs> Not that Francois needed much help, but when you've got 
Shane McKenzie pushing you in the back, listed at 5'11", 224. That's a pretty solid uh, uh, momentum coming behind you. <laughs> Definitely is. And uh, I like what the Pirates did on this opening drive, knowing they were going what type of coverage. Then. And when you look at the UNA's defense, their safeties are involved a lot in the run game. Um, they're the leading tacklers for the team, so you know they're getting down here. And we have a botch on the, a botch snap on the punt on the uh, extra point, and UNA picks it up, and they're racing down the sideline for the two points if he can get it to the end zone. And it looks like that's exactly what's going to happen. Two points. I believe that was Bracy that picked it up and went the other way with it and puts two on the board. So you don't see that very often at all. Score of six to two. Credit North Alabama being aware of the situation, scooping up the ball and taking it all the way back. Take a look at the replay here. You see the misplay and the by the Pirates and a great job by Bracey to pick that up and take it all the way back for the two points. And we talked about that um, in the opening week when they opened up against Elizabeth City. Um, some of the issues they were having with the snaps from the uh, long snapper. Um, it looks like those those issues are still going on here. And that's, you know, if you're looking at that one from the Pirates standpoint, you're really disappointed that you just gave away some cheap points. But back to the offense again, the Pirates are really did a really good job of understanding how they're trying to attack them with that defense. And you saw a lot of their run the runs to kind of get those safeties getting to thinking, come downhill, come downhill. Um, and that's opening up some lanes in the passing games and the flats. And even some of the things they're doing um, across the middle of the field with bringing receivers across the field. So I look to see how UNA is gonna look to adjust to that. And when you're getting a steady dose of that run, how flat-footed those safeties are going to be and how that's going to open up opportunities for Pirate, the Pirates to attack them down the field with the deep ball. But that's one thing the Pirates have been able to do um, this season. They've been able to score points. That's averaging, what, 37.5 points a game so far this season. Lomax has the ball teed up at the 35. And he is set and ready for the kick. It's going to be short and carry out of bounds. It's going to be a flag on the play. Well, it is a windy day here. I mean, it looked like they're trying to kick it away maybe from the return. Free kick out of bounds. Kick 18. By rule, the ball will be placed at the 35-yard line. First down. So great start in field position here for... The Lions start their own 35-yard line after the penalty. And we've got immediate timeout. So we're going to take a quick break. You're watching ESPN+. Plus. Back here in Hampton, Virginia, Matt White and Travis Oliver here for the Big South debut of the North Alabama Lions and the Hampton Pirates. Quick pass to the flat. We got a flag as the receiver is tackled near the far sideline. Looks like it was going to be some type of chop block, legal chop block by the offensive lineman because the interior lineman threw that pretty quick. They called it on two people. <laughs> Cody Mann and Whitehead. Fortunately, it won't count as two separate penalties, but. <laughs> <laughs> so they're going to march the Lions back. We're going to be looking at, well, what did you say a couple weeks ago? First in the country mile? That's my line. First in a country mile here for the Lions. It was Lopez. 
who on the year is completing, as you said in the pregame, 48% of his passes is in the shotgun. He's got four wide. He's looking over the defense, over the middle. He's got a man. The pass is complete to number 83, Jack Peavy. And again, in the opening, that's what I talked about. The Pirates have to be able to keep uh, Lopez in check in the air. He's going to make some mistakes throwing the ball. You have to be there to capitalize. They're the Pirates. Not in position, he found the open man and able to convert down first and 20. Caleb Brown with a tackle near midfield, first and 10. Near the 50 yard line, Lopez is gonna be handoff. Good blocking up front for the Lions. Gonna be a pickup of a couple yards there on the carry. Terrence Humphrey, Richard, senior out of Huntsville, Alabama. Pirates there not able to set the edge on the run. They were able to wrap those guards around and kind of seal the edge, give them a little corner and kind of pick up a couple here. Lions that quickly have made it into pirate territory. Lopez is going to keep it. He's going to look right. He's got a defender in his face and he wisely throws it away. He heard the footsteps coming from the pirate defense. I believe it was number 62, Groom, sophomore to Charlotte there yeah, in Chase. They're running an RPO, giving him the option to run a pass. Uh, but he got to be careful with that. Those linemen were a little bit downfield, and they kind of got away with that. They give him a yard or two, but there they were kind of far down the field. So they have to be careful to get rid of that ball a little bit quicker. Lions need to get to the Pirate 41-yard line. And the receiver was open, but timing was off as Dexter Boykin had space, but... Couldn't keep his balance, and the pass falls incomplete. It'll bring up fourth down. So, despite giving up that first big play that got the Lions to uh, midfield, Hampton's defense makes a stand, forces a punting situation for the Lions. Joe Gurley out to punt. He's doing double duty. He's the kicker and the punter for North Alabama. Snap is away. Nice high kick. Catlett will call for the fair catch and lets it fall into the back of the end zone. Wise decision there for Hampton, who will start with nice field position here for their second drive here of the afternoon. And now they're going to be looking to continue what they did on that first drive. You saw them doing a lot of stuff, um, getting outside, getting around the corner uh, versus the defense, uh, which opened up some things on the passing game with the play action game. So look for some of that that uh, those same things. But I'm I'm pretty sure if I'm the Pirates, I really want to get Shy McKenzie going. He's going to be a big, he's a big weapon for the Pirates. And he's going to keep that front honest and open up some things in the passing game. Three receivers set here for Francois. He's got McKenzie behind him. And it will be a handoff to McKenzie. McKenzie's got one man to beat. He's able to dive forward, maybe get a yard. McKenzie. The DN there for the Lions was able to almost meet him in the backfield. It was Tolls credited with the uh, tackle. Yeah, he was, they weren't able to kind of get him hooked there. They were looking to get outside. He did a good job of setting the edge and uh, slowing it down. Second down. Francois has time. Just gets it away. Catlett makes the catch, and it's going to be just across the 30. So it's a first down. And great poise in the pocket there from the Pirate quarterback, Francois, as just as I said, he had time. A Lion defender came loose and had a shot at him. DeAndre Hart was in great position. That was great defense by that young man. That was just better offense by Catlett and, and Francois. McKenzie again having some trouble getting going. They'll give him maybe two yards. The credit Cummings with the tackle. Brings up second down and eight for Hampton. Ball on their own 32 yard line. Francois in the shotgun with the snap. Looks over the D. Gets rid of it to, uh, it was an incomplete pass. Dana, I believe, had it, then lost it. Oh, no, excuse me, that's James Stanley, number 86. 
and it was dangerous as it kind of was just sitting on his shoulder there till the defender almost had an opportunity to just pluck it off of him. I think the defender was thinking, well, he's down. I'm not going to worry about it. Um, and, uh, and fortunately, he didn't. He just kind of let the play go if you're a Pirates fan. Um, but here, another big third down where the Pirates have been pretty successful here against this defense from UNA as they look again, go with their two-man coverage. Pirates need to get to their own 41-yard line. Lions trying to force their own three and out here on defense. Francois is going to have to tuck it and run. Across the 35 to the 40. Got a blocker. Across the 45, down to about the 46. Late flag comes in. The Lions are clapping. We'll see what the call is. Looks like going to be a hold. Number 15, offense. 10-yard penalty. They're going to get the grad transfer receiver, Cortez Lewis, with a hold. And I, when I saw the block, I wasn't sure if they were going to throw a flag on there. It did look like um, he might have got a hold on, but I thought it might have been a block in the back there uh, by the receiver. So it will be third down. Ball is marked at the Pirate 34-yard line. So still an achievable goal here for Hampton to get back to the 41-yard line here, barring another penalty. Francois in the pocket, looks downfield, goes to his receiver, and is intercepted. As Francois threw in a double coverage, there was a receiver, or excuse me, there was a defender right with number 85, the intended receiver, Dana, but then the safety just sat right back and played center fielder, just went up and got it. So we take another look at the replay here. And that's not the throw you want to make versus two-man coverage because that's what the safeties are looking for. The, the underneath coverage wants to make you put air on that ball so the safeties are sitting there waiting on it. Um, that was a great play there by the defensive back, Jeffrey Battle. Uh, but Francois has to be smarter with that, uh, with understanding that coverage. He had a lot of space in front of him to tuck that ball, take off and run and pick it up with his legs. Lopez will hand it off, but wrapped up in the backfield by a host of Pirates is the tailback. So effectively, that interception from Francois results almost like a punt as this drive for North Alabama will start at about their own 26, 27-yard line. And, and North Alabama is going to look to get on track here offensively. They got the big play on first down on after the penalty on the last drive, but after that, they kind of stalled offensively. Lopez looks right, has the receiver catch across the 30 before he's forced out of bounds. I believe the tackle was there by Oral Vasarian. And then he quickly <laughs> went back down, but he seems to be okay. Catch made by ja Jacoby Bird, 5A redshirt sophomore out of Florence, Alabama. And Vasarian has been having a good year since being moved down to linebacker. Um, that outside linebacker position is allowing him to fly around and play around the box um, and be physical against the run in some of those short passes. Third and six. Lions need to get to their 38. For a new set of downs. Lopez in the shotgun. Has time. He's going to run with it. He's wrapped up. Forced to try and throw it. But he's tackled right at the ankles from the Pirates number 29. That's Donald Smith. Great job by the initial surge. I think it was Sturdivant with the pink sleeve that was able to grab a hold of Lopez and slow him down just enough for the rest of the defense to swarm the quarterback and stop Lopez from picking up the first down on the ground. Yeah, he looked and kind of look him off like he was going to throw it to the left and get the defense to pursue. They did a great job on the backside of being in position. And the shoestring tackle there by Donald Smith got the Pirates off the, off the field. A great job defensively there by the Pirates. Fourth and three. Gurley back to punt again. Snap away. Pirates look to be more in a safe coverage. Cali will call for the fair catch, and he'll field it at his own nine-yard line. So the interception from DeAndre Francois doesn't hurt the Pirates on that drive. North Alabama punts it right back, and the Pirates will start first and 10 from about their own 15-yard line. And again, uh, we ta talked about earlier about how Hampton's been converted on third down versus UNA. The Pirates' defense only giving up 25% uh, first downs when opponents on third down. So they're great in those third down situations 
and you see it here on display on these first two drives. Catlett in motion. It's going to be a handoff to McKenzie, and that time he was able to get his legs turned, but I think if ball might have been stripped at the end of the run, there's a lot of extracurricular activity going on in that pile. I can tell you that's not a fun place to be at the bottom of that pile. McKenzie comes away with it as he got up. Yeah, really on the field as if there was a fumble re recovered by the offense beyond the line of game. First down. So, officially it'll go down as a fumble, but it was recovered by McKenzie or at least a Hampton Pirate. So, first and 10 for Hampton. Francois in the shotgun. Defense coming. Gets it to Bonds across the 30 for he's forced out of bounds by Bracey. Bracey was the line that picked up the uh, loose football and gave the Lions their two points on that uh, botched extra point attempt from Hampton after their uh, opening drive touchdown. Second and four. Ball goes back to McKenzie. He's got plenty of room across the 40. Brought down near the 45-yard line. And once Shay McKenzie can get through that offensive line, T.O., he just looks like a whole nother back. He does. And um, credit to the offensive line. They finally look healthy. They've been battling some injuries, playing some backups in the, in the recent weeks. Um, they have their full complement of starters back. And you can see the difference here with him running behind those guys. He, they're giving him the creases. And when he gets to that second level, he's a load to bring down. Yeah, that time McKenzie might have got back to the line of scrimmage, but I saw a couple of those D linemen from North Alabama fall backwards off that contact from McKenzie. So he'll head to the sideline for a much-deserved rest as Robinson will replace him. Second and nine here, under two minutes left here in this quarter. Pirates' drive has gotten them near midfield. Great job of checking. They get to see the blitz early. Pirates need to get into Lion territory here as we have a whistle, and it looks like we have a timeout called by Hampton. First timeout called by the Pirates. While we've got this break, a reminder. This will be a 30 This Big South Network broadcast is brought to you in part by GEICO. Big South alumni could save even more with an alumni discount from GEICO. Visit geico.com slash Big South today. Marriott, the official hotel partner of the Big South Conference, and Sun Belt Rentals. We have equipment for that. Just looking at some unofficial stats here, T.O., right now. Pirates with 118 yards through the air, 34 for the Lions. And so far, the Pirates just now getting the rushing game going, 39 rushing yards to five for North Alabama. But the Pirates with, what, two fumbles, and like you said early on, picked up some penalties very early in the game and just not the kind of clean football game you want to start off with here, uh, getting the uh, season going here in October. Exactly. Uh, those penalties really hurt. But they were able to rebound from a net. That was the good thing for the Pirates on that opening drive. But for North Alabama, the, well, North Alabama, I think the big thing here is they got to get possession of the ball. Um, they want to get the Pirates off the field um, and get that ball into their offense's hands. Pirates going to run the screen pass. Robinson has got a convoy with him. He's going to make a move across the 35, brought down just shy of the 30. That screen took forever. I thought Francois was going to get hit, and it looked like he took a shot back here that kind of dinged him up a little bit because it just the timing didn't look good on that screen pass. Yeah, unfortunately, that is who is down. It appears to be the quarterback. DeAndre Francois took a shot there, as you said, as the Pirates went to the screen pass. While we got a break here, just a reminder, you're watching ESPN Plus, and this Big South Network broadcast is brought to you by Geico. Again, like I said earlier, these the Lions, I know they're going to be looking to get off this field. Um, as they Their defense has been on the field majority of this first quarter. Um, and and their, uh, their team is predicated on getting off the field, getting the ball into that offense. That offense can be explosive, uh, but they got to get those guys more possessions. Yeah, medical staff still on the field, as is Coach Robert Prunty checking on DeAndre Francois, who's now going to get some assistance to get up. 
I think we're going to get another, uh, our first look today at Austin Bradley, who has seen some action here for the Pirates this season in a couple of games um, and has been effective, uh, more so with his legs running the ball um, than with his arm. But he's going to get an opportunity here to kind of run the offense as uh, Francois gets up and hopefully uh, he's okay and he'll be able to uh, get back in out there and uh, for the Pirates. Yeah, while we've got this break, we'll take a look at the – Sunbelt Reynolds out of town scoreboard. Campbell leads at halftime over Presbyterian 14 to 7. And other action kicking off in about an hour. Gardner Webb will be at Western Carolina. 6 p.m. Savannah State will be at Charleston Southern. And Monmouth will be at Wagner. Back to action here in Hampton. Austin Bradley in the ball game for Francois. We'll see if. Francois will be back. Bradley taking a shot on his first throw to Dana. Back shoulder. They're going to call him out of bounds. I don't know about that one, T.O. That one's definitely going to be reviewed. That was a good catch from our for our vantage point. Now, the, the referee definitely has a better angle as he was right there. But from here, that looked like a, a good catch. Taking a look at the Jumbotron, it's going to be hard to say where the catch was made. His knee was down when he had the ball. That looks like a catch. So they're going to take a look at it. When you look at it in slow motion, and it's, you know, I'm not going to defend the official, but that's one of those, it's hard to see if his feet are down when he makes the catch. From our vantage point, it looked like Dana had the ball in his left arm with his knee on the ground before his body landed out of bounds. Well, that's the beautiful thing about the replay system now. If you get a chance to fix those mistakes before that would have been called incompletion. I think a lot of people in the stadium and watching uh, probably feel like that was a touchdown. But one of the things you would like to see from the officials there in that situation, they're taught that they're looking at a couple of things. The official that was right there at the pylon, he's looking at his hands to make sure he has possession of the ball the linesman is looking down the line to make sure his feet are in bounds. So they should come together to have a conversation to make sure that is a touchdown. So when he sees it, he needs to look at that other official. Um, and that's typically how those situations uh, play out. Um, but I guess he felt he saw enough in the live action to say it was incompletion. Yeah, but again, that play pretty much happened right at his feet. So it was hard for him to take everything that you just explained into consideration just because – you can't see his feet. You can't see his body. You don't know when he made the catch because your angle is right on top of it. So we'll go to the field. For the review, the ruling on the field stands. I think that's one of those ones where there wasn't enough. They don't feel it was enough to overturn it. However, from my vantage point, it looked like he had the ball in his hand, knee was on the ground, and then the body touched out of bounds. But nonetheless, a great opening throw there from Bradley. And his one attempt, he's 0 for 1 as DeAndre Francois is back on the field. Yeah, and that's one of the things. And like you said, they made he made a call and there wasn't enough. Had he called it a touchdown, I think it would have held up as well. Or it, been, it wouldn't have been able to be overturned as well. So. And now we have whistles. Down. There was some confusion on what down it was going to be, but it is second down. Francois back on the field in the shotgun will hand off to the tailback. I believe that's Eason, and he is hit hard. Great tackle, open field no, variety from Jeffrey Battle. That was a great job by Jeffrey Battle of coming downhill. And again, that's what you get in that quarters coverage that they play. Those safeties, when they rerun, they're taught to come downhill hard um, and, and tackle, hit anything moving. That was a great job by Jeffrey Battle on that play. Brings up third down. Ball is on the line, 30-yard line. Pirates need to get to about the 22-yard line for a first down here. Third and eight as Bonds is in motion. He's able to break through some arm tackles, and he's going to be close to the first down. 
I thought he was going to be tackled for a loss, but he pick, was able to fight through an arm tackle and pick up that first down on the ground. Great job. Jadakus Barnes continues to just show his athleticism and talent. As we head to the end of this first quarter, we'll be back after a media timeout. You're watching ESPN+. Plus. Francois over the middle to Catlett. Catlett tries to turn the corner after 10 before he's forced out of bounds about the eight yard line. Tackle was David Swin. And the Pirates just look so efficient offensively. Um, having those two weeks to kind of heal up um, after, that, after the game against Liberty and kind of prepare, you can see they look sharp. Right now, the Pirates have completed a pass to five different receivers. As it looks like here, Pirates might have punched it into the end zone, and they did. Touchdown, Hampton. Will Robinson will put another six on the board, 12 to 2. Awkward score for football. <laughs> Great execution there. Offensive line able to get some push up front and create some scenes for him to run through. And he able to lower those passes as he got to the second level and drag the pile. The Pirates open up this second quarter with a quick score. And the Pirates will not go for the two-point conversion here. They'll set up for the extra point. And another bad snap. The kick is up, but the kick is good. So Pirates still need to continue to tweak that uh, snap and spot on the kicks. But Pirates able to overcome it there and put another point on the board, 13 to 2. <laughs> we got ourselves. Shortstop or second baseman for the Lady Pirates. An opportunity to see her play and get her first taste of collegiate uh, athletics. Something you know very well, T.O., both as a former player and former coach. It's always good to get those feet wet early and kind of get that. Uh, we got another short kick here by the Pirates. I guess they're thinking because of the wind, they want to kind of push it. But yeah, get kind of get your feet wet and get those butterflies out. You know, even though it's a game you've been playing all your life, when you first step out there on it, on it in a new environment, it can be a little overwhelming at times. But once you kind of get that that first, I guess in her case, you get that first swing or or you make your first play out there, it kind of goes away, and you're like, okay, this is what I've been doing. I'm I'm comfortable now. I'm ready to go. 14-26 here in the half. 13-2 is the score. Lopez will lead the Lions back out onto the field. They'll come out showing three wide, one back in the backfield. And it will be a run for the Lions. Nice, healthy pickup on the ground for North Alabama. Humphrey, on the carry. Humphrey picked up a solid five or six on that run. And this is what they haven't been able to do on their previous two drives. They hadn't been able to get ahead of the sticks. They've been first and long uh, in both situations here. Picking up the first down, and Humphrey looks like he's limping off the field here. Uh, hopefully he's okay, gets checked out by the medical staff, and he's able to return to the game. Jackson Carson will replace him. Lopez, same formation, same result. There's a handoff to Jackson. Is across the first down marker at about the 47, 48-yard line. Move the chains as Carson gave one of the Pirate defenders a free ride there. Someone... <laughs> jumped up and landed right on his shoulder and got carried a yard or two. Again, Carson running into the pile will push the ball over the 50-yard line, and it'll either be spotted right on or just into Pirate territory. They've been looking to go quick here, I guess, to get the Pirates off balance and not let them get any fresh defensive linemen into the game. And having some success here running the ball early is definitely going to help this uh, North Alabama offense uh, with being able to push the ball down the field in the passing game. Tight end in motion, second down, RPO. Lopez will keep it. He's got a bit of a wall there. He goes down near the line of scrimmage, and the ball's loose. The Pirates are running with it. Now whistles come out late. And he definitely was down. I, I can see it from here. As he hit the ground, he kind of the ball kind of rolled out. So that's a good call there by the officials. They but they do need to blow that dead a lot quicker um, before you get any extracurriculars. Yeah, it was about four pirates running down the sideline, looking back 
waiting for a whistle, but once they didn't hear it, initially they were booking for the end zone. Third down, seven to go. Lions need to get to the part 42-yard line. Lopez will get the call from the sideline right now, showing three wide, and Carson remains split out on the backfield. Tight end goes in motion. RPO again, Lopez looking for the pass. Throws it down the left side, had a man, but it goes back to what you discussed in the beginning of uh, our broadcast, T.O. The inaccuracy there of Lopez played a part. He had not one, but two receivers open and just couldn't get the ball to his receiver. And that brings up fourth down. And, he's a, and when he's, he's accurate, he's a good quarterback. He can make some throws and make some plays. But again, you see where that, that inconsistency in passing the ball is, is hurting his offense. He had the receivers, you're staying on the field. I'm mean, keeping it going, and, and and again, looking at the play count, Pirates in the first quarter, 25 plays to North Alabama, seven. You really, if you're North Alabama, you got to turn it around. You have to possess the ball more, let your defense rest, give yourself opportunity to put points on the board. Gurley, nice punt. Catlett looks to return, runs into one of his own blockers, and will be brought down just shy of the 20-yard line. They're going to be disappointed in that because he had a scene if he doesn't run into his own man. There was a crease there for him to, to kind of do something with that ball. Uh, but like you said, if you're North Alabama, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. And now we have to see the Pirates. Um, you're North Alabama, you got a great chance to get field position if you can hold them on this end of the field. Pirates, if you can put together a good long drive, um, that could kind of, I think that would take some of the life out of North Alabama. Parts have an opportunity, as you said here, to really put pressure on the Lions, leading 13 to two. DeAndre Francois, so far 10 of 13, 123 yards, one interception. Will break huddle, looks to the right. Jadakus Bonds, pick up of a couple there. And those two have really oh, developed yeah. great chemistry. Um, as you can tell, he's looking for Jadakus when he, when he gets the ball in his hand. He's looking to find him. He's definitely become a big playmaker for this Pirates offense. Second and five after the catch made by Bonds. They go back to the running game, and McKenzie able to break through the first wave of defenders. He crosses the 30-yard line. It's going to be a first down for Hampton. And if the Pirates can get the big fella going, it could be a long afternoon here for the Lions. But this is where the offense of North Alabama has to help out their defense. Their defense is playing way too many snaps here in this, so far in this first quarter. And you begin to wear down. And there's going to be, I think, encroachment. But we'll see what the call is from the officials. There's a lot of pointing going on down there at the line of scrimmage. And it will be... They're going to charge it to the Pirates. Did he say... McKenzie? Did he say one? No, he said Jadakiss Bonds. Oh, 81. Yeah, and, and and that that's a tough call because he's looking down at the line. He see those guys jump. If he flinches, that should be because what he's because of the encroachment by the defense. But official didn't see it that way and gave the Pirates a penalty. So first and 14 now for Hampton. Francois in the pocket finds Dana. Not much room for Dana. He wisely goes down. Just shy of the 35 yard line. Alex Dana, former reception. So bring up second and about 11 here. And that was a smart throw by, by Francois. And this, that's something you see the greats do. Like Tom, you watch Tom Brady. He doesn't always try to force it down the field. He'll take the check downs and the, take what the defense gives you just to keep the plays or like keep the drive alive. Another quick throw to Dana on the outside. This one's going to be for the first down. Great awareness by the receiver. Made the catch, turned his shoulders and extended, knowing he was near the marker. Alec Dana on the reception. Move the chain! First Dana looks a little hurt as he comes off the field as he got slammed into the turf pretty hard on his shoulder. Yeah, that, he's holding that right shoulder very gingerly. First and 10 ball just inside the 40-yard line. They go over the middle to the wide open tight end who's still up. Great job by Stanley. Francois. Stanley, Stanley just Stanley. ran right 
down the seam, almost as if the Lions defense just ignored his presence. And he made a big play right up the middle before he was brought down there by a couple Lions led by Battle. Robinson, nice shifty move on the inside, gets it to the 30 yard line of the Lions. And this offense is starting to hit on all cylinders, T.O. Well, when you can run the ball effectively, it opens up everything else in, the, in your arsenal. And you can see they're getting downhill with Robinson and Sean McKenzie right now. Second down. Another handoff to Robinson. He's going to dance across the line of scrimmage. He may have gotten across the uh, marker for the first down. Didn't need much. They're going to call him just a little bit short. Third down. thinking it's probably going to be a sneak here as they look they actually go into a huddle which we haven't seen the pirates do much this year same formation here shotgun for francois he's looking nowhere to go throws it dangerously in the middle of the field incomplete. it's incomplete so you know i think you were you had your finger on the pulse i think a quarterback sneak there would have been what you needed but a little I think, I think the Pirates might overthunk that play. Yeah, sometimes you can, you can, I guess out, you can out, you can trick yourself, you can out coach yourself. They're trying to come up with some fancy way to make it look pretty instead of just taking that ball in. McKenzie yeah. will come in, and it's going to look like it's going to be a wildcat, but it looks like a penalty on Hampton. I think they had too many men on the field. Oh, uh, timeout was called by Hampton. So that saves them the penalty. Yeah, the Pirates, um, and in college football, you can't break the huddle and have seconds. someone Time run off. Defense against sweat. That's my last name. In the NFL. One beard, one blade. And it looks like they're going to line up here in the quarterback sneak formation. 15 seconds on the play clock. And it looked like the Pirates got what they wanted. <laughs> they got a line to jump. They went old school, <laughs> went to the hard count. You don't see that get, you don't see that be effective too much. Yeah, a team's going to gun and they're doing the clapping and all the different things for the snap. And Francois able to show his his savviness as a quarterback, that experience, um, to get down there and, and force the jump. But it's offside defense. I believe that was Singleton who they're going to hit with the penalty. He had lined up right on the edge and wanted to try and make a play, but in the battle of the nerves, <laughs> <laughs> the Pirates come away the victor on that snap. Under eight minutes to go here in the half, Pirates want to tack some more points on the board. And as you said, the Lions are really going to try and dig deep here and get a stop, or at worst, allow a field goal opportunity here for Hampton. And the way special teams has looked for the Pirates, that might still be a win. It might be. Clock is ticking down here. Francois is going to have to get it off. Just beats the clock. Francois takes a shot to the end zone. He's got a receiver. It's Cortez. And it's in the end zone. And it's a touchdown, but a late flag. Are they going to call offensive Cortez pass interference? Because... Yep, it's offensive pass interference. They're going to say he pushed off. Interesting that the official who was standing right next to the play didn't throw it. It came from the back official. And I'd be interested to see on the replay what, what happened there on that play. Um, it looked like they were just, from our advantage point, they were just hand, they were jostling for a position. Here's we look at the re. Oh, yeah, that's a good call. You can see it laid in there. The hands get extended out by the receiver. As you look at the replay here, last second, you can see the hands stick out. He didn't push him in hard, but when those hands lock out like that, you got to throw the flag there. So that's a good call by that back judge. So it brings up first and 25 ball near the 40. They go across the middle. Catlett was looking for a flag as he thought there was contact prior to the ball arriving. 
It was a bang bang play, but I do think the defensive back got there a little too early. That could have been a, a pass interference call. It'll bring up second down and long. Not quite a country mile, just long. <laughs> Ten seconds on the play clock for Hampton. Looks like they're going to change coverage here to cover two. Or as the corners walk out and they roll down the coverage. McKenzie runs up the middle, had some room to work with. He ran into one of his linemen. Might have gotten a couple more. He ran into Malik Mackey. Picked up about six, seven yards on that run. As Will Eason will come in. Still going to be... Third and long here, about, they're going to say third and 19. Pirates need to get to the line 14 yard line for a new set of downs. And if I'm the Pirates here, it might just be smart to take what the defense gives you and maybe get a good field goal attempt out of this situation instead of forcing it down the field. And Francois under duress. It looked like it was going to be a screen opportunity. Pirates were fortunate. They didn't get called for a hold, as it looked like one of the DNs came off the edge pretty clean, and I thought I saw Jersey getting tugged. But nonetheless, it will bring up fourth down, and it looks like the punt unit is coming in for Hampton. Raha, he Raha. Raha. He, he's listed as a specialist, so <laughs> keep you on your toes. Well, on that play, that, that last play they ran the screen, that was the second screen they've run today, and you can see in both situations just the timing. Um, I don't know how much the screen game is implemented into this Pirate offense, but you can see the timing just doesn't look, look great there for the Pirates. Pirates. Took the delay a game there to give him an extra five yard cushion here. So now Aroha will cross midfield looking to try and pin the Lions back deep. Six and a half minutes remaining here. Fourth and 24 after the penalty. Snap is away. The kick It's going to be a short kick, and it's going to be downed inside the five-yard line. Great job by Aurora. He actually was one of the uh, unsung heroes two weeks ago for Hampton at Liberty. One of his punts actually hit uh, one of the Army National Guard. And with their pick, Washington selects Montez Sweat. Yeah, this is a prime opportunity for the Pirates to try and make a play here. Lopez quickly fakes the pass, throws to the right side. Receiver made the catch. No, the official's going to wave it off. I thought he had done a good job of holding on to it, but in coverage there was Mason King. Second down. Pass was intended for Bird. Big drive here for the Lions offense. Uh, for as poorly as they've played on both ends, you got a 13 to two score game. You're down two scores. If you're yeah, alive. offensively, 18 yards rushing, 34 yards through the air. You got to try and get something going here for the Lions. It's going to be a handoff. Sturdivant right there. The Pirate defense makes the stop wisely. Let's go. Don't need any extracurricular activity there and give a uh, free 15 yards. And you see Carson still out there. So maybe the injury to Humphrey was a little more significant. I hadn't seen anything. He's standing over on the sideline. Um, hope that young man is okay and able to get back out there for um, the Lions. Big third down here. It's third and 10. Can't get too cute here if you're the Lions. You want to have something quick. Lopez in the end zone is going to be a screen. And Vesarian wraps him up in the end zone. That's the safety. They're going to say forward Blue momentum, the stop that down. Yeah. We stopped the field of play. Fourth down. Wow. That's a tough break for the Pirates. I thought they had him in for the safety. But nonetheless, 
they're going to mark him at the one yard line. So it's going to have to be an obvious punt here for the Lions. It's going to be interesting to see what the Pirates choose to do here for this punt, having them pinned down with not that much space. Are they going to come after it, or are they going to just set up some type of return here? Gurley with his heels nipping at the Catley will let it fall at the 40. He's going to tell the team to stay away. It will roll out of bounds right at the 45-yard line of North Alabama, and despite whether or not that was a safety or not, great play made by this Hampton Pirate defense, stonewalling the Lions and actually forcing them to lose four yards on that uh, drive. This defense has been, uh, as one Terrell Suggs might have put it, balling out of control right now. They have been all over this Lions offense, not giving them any room to breathe and really snuffing out any opportunities or any, any positivity that the Lion offense may have thought they were creating. Um, it's going to be interesting to see at half. I'm sure the Lions are going to sit back and look at what they're doing um, and try to come out with some type of um, adjustments. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how they come out in the second half. But right now, they got to concern themselves with keeping the Pirates off the scoreboard again. I appreciate a good T-Sizzle reference in 2019. <laughs> Francois, play action. He's looking deep. He's taking a shot over the middle. Catlett. Good coverage there by the Lions. I want to say that was K.J. Smith, the senior DB out of Perry, Georgia, making a play, making sure Cali couldn't bring that one in. Good job by the Lions here. The Pirates are going to, uh, when they watch tape, he's going to be mad at stuff. He had Jadakus uh, Bonds back here one-on-one -on -one with the corner. He was wide open on the comeback route. But that was a great play by the defense and knocked that ball loose. McKenzie wrapped up at the line of scrimmage. Another strong play from the Lions defense. Tackle made by Wallace Cowens Jr., the junior DN out of Conyers, Georgia. And this Lions defense didn't get much of a break, but they're trying to flex their muscle here and not surrender any points. As we near the end of the first half, four minutes left. Third and 10, Pirates need to get to the 35-yard line to keep this drive alive. Francois handles the bad snap under pressure, rolling away, throws. It was intended for McKenzie, incomplete. And that will be a quick three and out for this offense. And there seems to be some kind of confusion as Francois is looking around. But that'll bring Aroha back on the field. See if he can duplicate that same punt from the last drive. Looks like that's Peavy, I think, back to return the punt for the Lions. On that last, on that drive, I think he might have been upset with his offensive lineman that they might have missed up the protection which didn't give him a chance to push the ball down the field like they hoped for. The Lions were coming after that one. Another good punt from Aroha will go out of bounds near the 15-yard line. We'll see where the officials will mark it. I think they're going to say it went out of bounds at the 19 or the 20. So that is where the Lions will start with 338 to go. Much better field possession for North Alabama than a drive ago. <laughs> uh, definitely, and you feel much better with 338. Uh, you got a chance to try to get the ball down the field, and you're not um, feeling the, the sting of being backed up at your end zone. So it'll be interesting to see how they come out and attack this offense, try to get a score here before the half, because they do get the ball coming out of the half. I believe North Alabama still has all three timeouts. As Lopez takes the snap, looking to his left. Sets his feet, wants to go deep. Had a receiver, but again, the inaccuracy of the throw. Andre Little was wide open. The DB was playing the deep ball. Little was trying to come back to it, but Lopez just couldn't get it to him. And I'll say that's one thing about having Vissarian out there as you're one of your outside linebackers as a former defensive back. You know you can match him up in coverage, and it's not a big mismatch. Um, but again, 
if this offense is going to be successful, Lopez has to become more accurate in the passing game. Second and 10. It's a five receiver set. Lopez alone. He's got defenders coming at him. He's going to run to the sideline. He had an es uh, he had an escort there yeah. named Oral Vasarian <laughs> who wisely pulled up. So no gain as Lopez ran out of bounds right at the 20. And Lopez, who is actually pretty athletic and has some pretty good legs on him, um, is finding it hard to find some running space against this speedy uh, pirate defense. Yeah. Keenan Marr brought the initial pressure that got him out of the pocket, but a great job. As you said, Lopez showing his athleticism. He goes to the left sideline. There's cool. contact back and forth. Late flags come in, but it's going to... It's going to go against Hampton. But it was a lot of pushing on both sides there. Well, that's that tough throw when the quarterback underthrows it. The receiver can see it, so they make a plan. Number 29, defense. 15-yard penalty. And automatic. First down. The 15-yard penalty. Once again, the college game is 15 yards. Whereas in the pros, it's a spot foul. So. And it's a tough, that's a tough play for the defensive back on those underthrows because you're playing for the deep ball. The receiver adjusts and he gives you a little pat to go past him. And you're trying not to give up that big play. And then Lopez okay. runs with it okay. near midfield. He's having a little life here on offense after that play. Two forty and counting. Clock continues to uh, work here. So first and ten. Lopez takes the snap. Pressure coming from the edge. He's going to throw it to the right side. He has a man, and there's going to be incomplete. Wow, very, very tough play there for Jacoby Bird, who I think might have had an argument that Valdez might have hit him in the foot on the way up. <laughs> it was a dangerous play as Valdez lost his footing there in coverage, and Bird should have made that catch. Well, that he, I think he wasn't prepared to feel his foot get pulled from under him. Um, you're seeing some success with these throws by... Lopez, I don't know if it's, if it's what he's, his goal is, but... Lopez, is again, home. fumble! Strip sack there from Sertivon. Ball still loose. Both teams fighting for it, and the officials say it's Hampton football. Lopez had plenty of time, but Sturdivant just able to extend that long pink arm, and he makes a play. Lopez fell backwards and only had one hand on the ball and put it on the turf. And the Pirate D-line almost smelled blood in the water. He's never seen so many big men move so fast. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lopez has to have that clock go off in his head, and he has to know to get rid of that ball or take off and run. Take the check down or use your legs. He held on to that thing way too long. Great job on the back end by the coverage and not giving them somewhere to go. So both teams now with a turnover each. Francois looks over. Now he's going to use that clock, run right up the middle. He's still on his feet. He's going to go down right at the five-yard line. And almost as if he heard you, he showed you what you're supposed to do in that situation. <laughs> Once you hear that clock expire, you got to go. Well, I'll tell you this much. The Pirates coaching staff needs to get Moday Davis out here and show him how to slide <laughs> so he can take those big hits. It looked like Francois was going to slide earlier, but then realized he still had so much green space, he didn't want to give up the opportunity of getting to the end zone. But I agree, you can't take those kind of shots, especially having taken one earlier on that screen pass in the first quarter. Francois goes to the end zone. Jadakis Bonds, touchdown, Pirates! Great route by Jada Kiss with the, the slant fade. Great route, great play by that young man. He's really developed into an awesome weapon for this pirate offense. And as you mentioned earlier, both Bonds and 
Francois developing a uh, wonderful chemistry. A few weeks ago, I was here about two hours before kick, and those two were just working one-on-one -on, -one on running different routes, just kind of getting that feel for each other. So it's great to see it pay off as the extra point, snap down, kick is up, and the kick is good. Much better special teams play there for the Pirates. You're looking at a 14-point swing here, though. If you're looking at the Lions getting ready to cross midfield and getting ready to take it in, possibly for a score. That makes this a one-possession game for them. Turn the ball over deep in Pirate territory. You look at a score here by the Pirates, and now uh, the momentum you created was stopping that, that getting the three and out, all that is gone. How do you rebound? What do you do here? Interesting Pirates. What are they going to do on this kickoff? But the Pirates have amount, amassed over 300 yards here in the first half, 353 yards of offense. Yeah, nearly 300 through the air alone. It's only 42 by the, the Lions offense. I don't think anybody coming in today um, expected um, this type of futility from the Lions offense. So let's see how, um, see if they can rebound here and Lopez can get this offense going. Yeah, the Lions have definitely had opportunities, but as you so eloquently pointed out in the pregame, T.O., it's going to come down to how accurate is the quarterback, Lopez, and so far his inability to hit the uh, receivers has been the problem thus far for this offense, but we'll be right back. You're watching ESPN+. Plus. Eyes ahead, we're always there. Auto Owners Insurance. Back here on the ESPN Plus broadcast of North Alabama and Hampton. And it's been quite the display here for this Pirates defense, T.O. They have found a way to really stymie this offense of North Alabama. And we've got to change that quarterback for North Alabama. Taking the snap that time was Blake D Deaver. I think they've reached a point where they realize something has to change in order to give them a chance to be successful offensively. So they brought in um, the backup. Yeah, Deaver listed six foot three, 257, Retro Jr. out of Wellington, Florida. On the year, according to my stat sheet, he's attempted one. He's attempted two passes, completed one for just 25 yards. So he's going to take it a shot here. Goes over the middle. Pass incomplete. incomplete pass. pass was intended for the big tight end, number 87. Swan couldn't hold on to it. And just like that, Lions face third and six with 52 seconds left here in the half. Well, I got a chance to watch him throwing it around in pregame. I went down to the field to watch him, watch the quarterbacks. Um, and he seemed, seemed to have a better ball coming out of his hand. He had a stronger arm, um, a little bit inaccurate on some of the throws. Uh, but I think his frame being, being a lot taller here than Lopez, who is listed at 6'1", but is probably more 6 foot 5'11". He's going to be able to see over those linemen and, and throw through some of the lanes that Lopez probably couldn't see or be able to throw through. And... Deaver goes down, sacked here on fourth down. Coach Prunty will call a timeout. I think that is going to be Hampton's last timeout. And what's, that's the, this is what you give up with Deaver's out there in the game, though. Lopez, more athletic, can move around and create, keep a play alive. Deaver's is more of your traditional quarterback. He's more of your traditional quarterback. He's going to stand in the pocket. They're going to put a few seconds back on the clock for the Pirates. So 42 seconds officially. Our score, 20 to 2. The defense has forced another three and out. Pirates special teams unit will come on the field for what you would expect to be another punt here from North Alabama. And I'm sure the Pirates here are going to probably set up for a return to give Catlin the chance to maybe find the scene and get some field position or even get a score here. Punt 
punt is away. Nice. High punt. It's going to force Cali to back up to about his 15-yard line where he'll call for the fair catch. So a great change in field position there for North Alabama. As Hampton may elect to just try and run out the rest of this clock. You don't want to necessarily risk a big play here, T.O., and give North Alabama any momentum going into the second half. Yeah, I think if you're the Pirates here, you hand the ball off to uh, McKenzie um, and let him see if he can break one, if he can find a crease in there. If you do decide to pass it, uh, it may just be taking, taking something short, see if a receiver can break a tackle. Um, unless there is a vertical pass that is wide open, like you say, you don't want to force it. Yeah, I think the Pirates are going to line up here in victory formation, and they're going to just let this one tick down, and that will wrap it up here in Hampton for this first half with the Pirates on top 20-2 to two in what has been a defensive... Uh, I don't want to say a clinic, but really the Hampton Pirate defense has shown something it hasn't shown all year. Only hasn't given up 50 yards total here in this first half. Yeah, they've been uh, they've been stellar so far in this game with their execution um, and just really keep not letting, not allowing the Lions to break out and get a big play and managing to somehow to keep these guys from from using athleticism, which has been. Uh, very impressive by this Pirates defense. Yeah, as we head to halftime, take a look at the Sun Belt Reynolds out of town scoreboard. Campbell leading Presbyterian 14 to 7 in the fourth quarter. The other action doesn't pick up until 3.30. So we will be back with the second half after this break. You're watching ESPN Plus. field is uh it's windy down there and there's a little bit of rain and it's a little cold down there yeah um, you know you would if you weren't here on tuesday or wednesday in this part of virginia it was 93 degrees <laughs> today feels like fall and a big play there and this might be the first score and it is for 10 to 5 touchdown for north alabama lopez we said he's got to be accurate and he was able to get it to his receiver the db tried to make a play on the ball but as you said earlier when you undercut the route it leaves you open, and that's exactly what happened right there as North Alabama strikes quickly here in the third quarter. Uh, and that was Dexter Boykin, who's been a uh, a weapon for this uh, North Alabama offense. 
so far this year. Uh, he's caught 15 balls for 343 yards. You can tack that one on to his total. Uh, but there, what you saw there, looks like it might have been some form of a blown coverage by the Pirates. The defensive back was underneath the route thinking he had help over the top, and there was no safety help over the top. So curious if that was a blown coverage or a big mistake uh, by Smith. But either way you, you slice it, North Alabama's on the board. They get a score, and they kind of change the tone of this second half here as they look to mount a comeback. Yeah, I think the blown coverage may have been on Donald Smith as the coaching staff immediately go to him and discuss what he saw or what he did do, what he didn't do, et cetera, et cetera. But the extra point was no good. So our awkward scores continue here, 20 to eight, here at Armstrong Field. And I'll tell you that pass, it looked like Smith initially had a chance to make a play on it as he was kind of like sizing it up. But I don't think he, if he really judged the depth of the ball like he, he thought it might not carry as far, but um, give Lopez credit. He found the open guy, made the throw, um, and got it to his receiver. And, once again, they were able to kind of just walk it on in there for a score. You are the winner. Yeah, I think that might be the easiest touchdown they're going to have all year. <laughs> it was just so easy, but the wind beginning to make a slight impact here as the Lions have to re tee up the ball as the wind took it off. And I think we are set and ready to go. Gurley. Gets the all clear, and the Pirates offense will be back on the field a lot sooner than they expected as still 14-43 left here in the third quarter. Turf Monster got Easton as he tried to cut, and it'll be first and 10 from just north of the 20-yard line. I guess you can say that's the 21. And you can hear a little excitement over there on that North Alabama sideline. Uh, they make a big play here on the kickoff. Pirates now have a long field of travel. After getting that quick score, maybe that gives them that that energy, that, that kind of bump that they needed um, here to make a contest out of this game here with the Pirates. First and 10, they're going to move it back inside the 20. So that's where the Pirates will start here in the third quarter. Francois in the shotgun, three receivers. Back to his left, or to his right, excuse me, is McKenzie. He'll get the carry, push it out about three, four yards. And that was actually a good play call as the, as the Lions dialed up a weak side pressure. And they ran a kind of an OGT play, pulling those linemen around. And it created that seam inside where he was able to gain some yardage out of that. Brings up second down and six. Another RPO, Francois under pressure will get it to his tight end, but a great read by the defense. Tackle made by Hart, the safety coming up, making a tackle in the backfield. Reception was made by Stanley. He might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage if he was lucky. Big third down here for both teams, I think. Pirates want to uh, keep stay on the field and kind of flip this field if they have to. Uh, but you want to stay on the field. Your offense, the defense wants to get this short field for their offense who has a little energy moving forward. Right. The Lions have the most momentum they've had since they scored on the uh, botch extra point attempt from Hampton. Francois, nowhere to go. Nearly pulled a Houdini act, but stepped up right into the arms of Ryan and Martin. And that'll be, the, I believe, the first sack of the day for the Lions. And that's how you start the second half for North Alabama. A quick score in less than 20 seconds. And then the defense comes out, forces a sack on third down. And the Pirates will have to punt here. Aroha standing on his own two-yard line, getting ready to send this one away. And it's amazing the power of just one good thing happening. They get the big play and on the pass play. And, and now you just see how that filters through the team. Um, it's now everybody's playing with a little bit more energy. It was a low snap. Aroha barely able to hold on to it. It takes a pirate bounce over the 50, and they'll down it about the 36, 37 yard line. And we've got immediate timeout, so we'll be right back. You're watching ESPN Plus. Play on play.
holding number 11 return team 10 yard penalty from the end of the kick first down <laughs> Back here in Hampton, a reminder for the best in Big South coverage, visit BigSouthSports.com. Stay current with the latest news, results, stats, standings, and much more. Enjoy video features showcasing the remarkable student athletes or connect to the school sites or social media outlets all in one place. It's BigSouthSports.com. Back to action here. It's the RPO again for the Lions as Carson continues to stay in the game. And you pointed out early, he's been in since we saw... The starting tailback for North Alabama head to the sideline in Humphrey. Yeah, he apparently the injury is more significant than, um, or significant enough that he won't look like he won't return. Yeah, so uh, hopefully it's not an injury that lasts very long. That young man's able to get back out there. You hate to see um, anybody get hurt in this game, uh, especially these young men out here working hard. And competing so uh, speedy recovery to him second and seven ball on the 30 is going to be a, a reverse pirates try to strip the ball well at the end of that punt as we were going to media timeout the officials threw a flag for a hold so this drive will start at the 27 for the lions they're able to pick up three yards on the first down and they picked up another three here on second, so it'll bring third and four. And this has been a, 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 a tough down here for the Lions. They haven't been able to convert on third down pretty much all day. Lopez pump fakes, looks left, gauges it again, makes a completion down the field. And those are the kind of plays that they weren't able to convert in the first half. Bird lays out and is able to make an impressive catch. If Lopez gives him a better ball, that might be another touchdown on the board for the Lions. Yeah, he's something happened in the locker room. Maybe he found a telephone booth and went and changed and became Superman because uh, he's out there uh, making the throws and, and looking like a, a different player here in the second half. Snap to Lopez, handoff Carson, tries to turn the left corner. He's going to have pick up a few yards, jumps up in the air before he's tripped up just shy of the first down marker and beginning to see a different look out of this Lions team. I think this is one of the things the the, the Pirates coaching staff might have been afraid of. Um, it's just in this these second halves, they haven't seemed like the same team. Um, it's almost like a Jekyll and Hyde for the Pirates, and right now Hyde is out there while... Wow. The Lions are definitely finding some momentum and finding some um, lanes here to run the ball against the Pirates. And Carson again on the carry. He'll be stood up at the line of scrimmage. He may have gotten the first down, but we'll see where the officials will mark it. We'll look, take a quick look at the Sun Belt Reynolds out of town score. Campbell leads Presbyterian 28 to 14. So brings up fourth down. As I was saying, Campbell 28 to 14 over Presbyterian in the fourth quarter, and Gardner Webb, Western Carolina, tied up at seven in the first quarter. Pirates will take a timeout, but on that last play, the officials say officially it was a fumble by the Lions that was recovered. So it's going to be short for the Lions. So it's going to set up this third and one. You need to get the ball to the 36-yard line for a new set of downs here. So Hampton and North Alabama will discuss it here in their respective huddles. What do you what do you call here on a third and short? Um, I give the ball to Carson. You had the, he's been running the ball effectively here in the second half, um, but I'm sure they're probably going to call some type of. Um, so it looks like Hampton so, might get a timeout back here. Yeah. yeah, to translate all of that, the Pirates called a timeout basically to force the challenge. However, the replay booth apparently buzzed the officials prior to that. 
So it sounds like Hampton will get that timeout back while the replay officials look, hope see if there's anything there that will overturn the call as it was said initially it will be North Alabama football as the Lions recover their own fumble. Well, I think, and I think that's what the Pirates may be looking for. Maybe they're trying to say his momentum was stopped so it wasn't a fumble. So it's a little, instead of being third and looks like a long one, it might be third and three. Um, or maybe the Pirates are convinced they may have recovered the fumble and they get possession of the ball. So, Well, while that is being determined, reminder, Marriott is the official hotel partner of the Big South Conference for the best rates. Book directly with Marriott by heading to BigSouthSports.com slash Marriott, and you will support Big South student athletes in the process. That's BigSouthSports.com slash Marriott. And if you're looking to find the best variety of officially licensed merchandise and conference and school branded items, go to BigSouthStore.com, gear up with some new apparel. Six so as you heard there from the official, the call, the ruling on the field stands. It's going to be it's third and one. Nine fifty two here in this third quarter. And we are back to action here in Hampton. Lopez takes a snap. His nose is going to be a quarterback keeper, and he'll have the first down. As he dives across the 36-yard line, or excuse me, the 34-yard line. And Lopez is out there. You can see him move on a little more energy, a little more confidence as, he, as he's calling these plays and execute them. He has a little bop in his step. Yeah, he's made two impressive throws here in this second half, and it's really changed the complexion of this ball game. In less than 20 seconds, North Alabama was able to put six on the board and look to repeat that here. Lopez over the middle again has a man. And the catch was made by Bird. Bird was tackled, but... Again, the official is a little slow on the whistle. He got back up and kept running, but it will be spotted at the 22-23 yard line of Hampton, first and 10 after the completion. And they've made some good adjustments here, but I think the biggest adjustment is honestly just been the efficiency of Lopez, him being able to um, throw catchable balls to the receivers. Man in motion, quick throw to the flats, catch made by number 11, that's Little, and Little is tackled just shy of the goal line. And there's a late flag thrown too, and it looks like it might be some extracurricular as Little tried to get up. I think the pirate that made the tackle didn't want to let go and it might be an unsportsmanlike here. And that's not a terrible, it's, a, it's not a smart penalty in that situation, but being where they were at on the field, it doesn't hurt you yardage-wise, but you just got to be smarter, and as another flag flies. And I think that was where the penalty came in. Caleb threw the ball at him as he got up. So I think they were saying the what him not letting go was the first unsportsmanlike, and then I guess throwing the ball was the second. That's the only thing I can. But since they were almost back to back, it's kind of it's it's interesting to determine when one unsportsmanlike stopped and one started. But nonetheless, Caleb is ejected from the game, and North Alabama punches it in from we'll call it the one inch mark, and the co complete the complexion of this game has completely turned twenty to fourteen. 
Extra point opportunity on the way here for North Alabama. Two touchdowns here in less than five minutes for the Lions. And they have taken all of the momentum here, Tia. Yeah, you just see the, the, the Pirates just um, weren't ready for the, for the adjustments made by the Lions. Um, and again, I hadn't really seen anything different that they're doing other than um, you can just see the effectiveness, the effective throwing of Lopez here in the second half, which has made a huge difference in the confidence of the offense. Receivers are making the catches. They're getting yards out the catch. Um, and that's really been the biggest difference. Um, again, sometimes when you get up in that lead um, and you've been dominating the opponent the way it is, it's easy to kind of get laxed and just feel like that's going to continue instead of going out there and continuing to execute the game plan. And that's what I, I, if I was, I guess I am observing this. That's what I'm seeing. That's what I'm seeing from the Pirates. And, and what I'm observing right now, not to cut you off, is two completely different sidelines. The Hampton sideline looking down and dejected. The, uh, the North Alabama sideline full of energy, jumping up and down, excited back into this game. So the Lions haven't completely come all the way back, but with two touchdowns and a converted extra point there for the Lions, they're knocking on the door of taking this game right back from Hampton, who went into halftime leading 20 to two. And sometimes I'll say some of it is the psychological things of the game. Um, in the locker rooms, you're not sure how it, how a, something might have been said that kind of triggered something in the players. Hey, let's not, you know, let's go out here and, and execute and say, let's go out and finish the game. Let's not do what we did this week or that week. And that can kind of trigger some thoughts in the players that make them a little less confident because of past failure. So um, hopefully for the Pirates, you're a Pirates fan, you'll see them rebound as Eason takes the ball out to the 25 on the return. On the kickoff Now Francois will get a chance to come out here and uh, lead this Pirate offense, and hopefully they can try to put together a drive that's going to allow them to And here we have a media timeout. We'll be back with more football here on ESPN+. Plus. We know some of the best. Getting the job done just got easier. Back in Hampton, Virginia, Matt White, Travis, T.O. Oliver here at Armstrong Stadium, where it's been all North Alabama here in the second half, trailing now 20 to 15. Let's see if this Pirates offense can get some of that momentum they had in the first half. Francois in the shotgun quickly gets it to Robinson in the flat, across the 35, across the 40, still on his feet, still in bounds across the 45 yard line and that might be the spark the Pirates need just to get this thing moving in their direction you said earlier T.O. the positivity that becomes infectious after one good play yeah and that was a big play right there knowing that um, they had some success on that play with the back out of the backfield able to get the ball out quick pick up a first down and now kind of get that monkey off your back you've got the good play now let's, let's build on it First and 10, they're going to mark Robinson out of bounds near the 40. Wide open Bonds makes the catch. It's a first down into Lion territory. The Lions sideline trying to persuade the official to say J.D. Kiss hadn't secured the catch, but it's a first down here for Hampton into Lion territory for the first time here in the second half. Um, great throw, great catch by uh, the Pirate offense. First and 10, they go back to Robinson, able to avoid the first defender, but the second one was able to just to get enough of the running back tackle there from the linebacker Dredd, 5'10", no, senior out of Foley, Alabama. Stops what could have been a big pickup for Robinson, held it to maybe a half yard. Yeah, they were able to get a, a, enough of him just to slow him down until the rest of the guys came and get him on the ground. But you can see the Pirates now look like they got a little life, and this might end up being the ball game we thought it would be. And there's 
Bonds again, great open field tackle from Swin. Bonds looked like he was ready to turn the corner and uh, cross that first down marker, but a great open field tackle from the Lions will force a third and short here. Lion, or excuse me, Pirates are going to go quarterback sneak, and I think with a bit of a push, the Pirates have the first down. Let's see where the officials will mark it. And I think what you're seeing from the Lions this second half, too, on defense, they're doing a better job of tackling than they did in the first half. The first half, you saw a lot of arm tackles and broken tackles. Here, they're getting their ball carriers on the ground and not giving up that extra yardage after the catch or run. The officials give Francois the yardage he needed. Play action. Francois, under pressure, going to throw it towards the sideline, well out of bounds. Great decision there from the quarterback. Just got rid of it. Had several receivers in the area, so no... No threat of a interception, no threat of an intentional grounding penalty there. That was a good play call by the defense. They came with the corner blitz, and he sold it well, showing the press and came off the edge um, and really was able to get to Francois and, and press him into um, throwing that ball away. It's going to be second down. Francois pump fakes, goes over the middle. Nearly intercepted. I think that was big number 96. Owensby timed the, uh, read the quarterback's eyes and timed his jump to deflect it down. And that's what those defensive linemen talk to. If you know you can't get to the quarterback and you're getting stuck at the line or just kind of read the quarterback and get the hands up when you see him getting ready to throw, try to close those windows. So great job there by Owensby. Pirates drivers started to stall here. It's third down. Francois looking right, goes back to Robinson out of the backfield, across the 30, across the 20, 15, 10, 6, 7 yard line before Robinson's brought down. And you talked about with the quarters defense, the wheel routes from the running backs are a threat. And Robinson showed you that on that play. They knew the pressure was coming, dialed up the right call on a quick little swing route to the back out of the backfield. They wrap them up. They wrap real Robinson up in the backfield this time. But yeah, they, they read the pressure, knew the blitz was coming, called the great, the perfect call in the, in the, in the screen there and able to uh, get some big yardage out of that play. It's gonna Will, as Will Robinson comes out to take a break out the well-deserved, uh, getting the well-deserved break out the great run. Eason will replace him. Both. Cortez Bell, excuse me, Cortez Lewis and Jarrett Powell check in for the Pirates here. Second and goal. Four receivers set. Eason split out to the right of Francois. Three seconds in the shot clock. Pirates get it off. They hand off to Eason. He's trying to turn the corner. He's still on his feet, but he lost about two yards. And the Lions not full that time. Well, you see the, the Lions are not sitting back and just playing coverage anymore. Their adjustment is, looks like it's been to, to bring pressure to the Pirates, see if they can pick it up, and then see if Francois can make good decisions under that pressure. Um, and there they kind of couple running plays, just no room to run uh, with the pressure they're bringing. Third and goal. Francois is going to the air under pressure. Rolling to his right. Will throw it out the back of the end zone. And the Pirates will have to settle for a field goal opportunity. And nothing guaranteed here. We saw early on two points. Well, the first two points surrendered by the Pirates today came on a botch uh, snap for the extra point on the Pirates' opening score. So... Pirates need to take advantage of an opportunity to put three on the board and make this an eight-point ball game. Snap down. The kick is up, and the kick is good. So what was the Pirates' best drive here of the second half will end with three. We've got immediate timeout here in Hampton. We'll be back on ESPN+. Plus. We are back here in Hampton where the Pirates 
came away with a field goal. Still just a one score ball game for North Alabama fans. So, T.O., we were talking off air that, you know, in this chess match of a football game, some still consider that a win for the Lions. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the hold the Pirates to only three points there, keeping a one score game after that great drive the Pirates kind of had there. Uh, you feel good about that because the Pirates have not stopped the North Alabama offense here in the second half. Return for the Lions was K.J. Smith, the 5'11 DB. He was tackled near the 35-yard line. It looks like there's an injured Pirate on the play. So while they attend to the injured player, a reminder for the find the best variety of officially licensed merchandise and conference and school branded items at BigSouthStore.com. Gear up with some new apparel or find that perfect gift. Get fully equipped for all your game day fun at BigSouthStore.com. And get social with the Big South. Join the always growing network of Big South fans on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and more. You can also follow the conference source for game updates and on-site championship coverage via Twitter at Big South Game Day. Follow, watch, like, and share with the Big South Conference. I know, Tia, you're a big guy on social media, you know. I know you <laughs> share with the Big South with your plethora of followers. And all 50 of them. <laughs> <laughs> We'll continue to take a look at the Sunbelt Reynolds out-of-town scoreboard. Campbell with a 28-14 victory over Presbyterian. Uh, beginning in the second quarter, Western Carolina on top of Gardner-Webb, 14-7 that game. Just starting in the second quarter, as I said. And then at 6 o'clock, Monmouth will be at Wagner, and Savannah State will be at Charleston Southern. So back to action here. The Lions trail 23 to 15. They've got the momentum thus far here in the second half. And Carson going to pick up a yard, maybe two, before Sturdivant wraps him up. Yeah, and only picking up two. That's a win for the Pirates there to get back to some normalcy of um, trying to keep these uh, – keep the Lions in second and long and third and long where they've been able to get off the field on those third downs. So that was key, not letting him get a big chunk of yards on first down like we've seen the couple of the past two drives. Lopez has plenty of time. Now we'll roll to his right. Going to stop, look downfield, finally just throws it out of bounds. Great job by this Hampton defense. Pirate sideline was making the. Oh, wow. They're going to say it was a hold on the Pirates. It's a 10 yard penalty. I was going to say the Pirate sideline was making the uh, intentional grounding motion, but he was well out of the pocket. I think they were just politicking to get that uh, <laughs> holding penalty thrown out. But nonetheless, it will be a first down. That was a big penalty for the Pirates. And yeah, that, that scramble, when the quarterback scrambles out like that, receivers are taught to do certain things. So I'm, I'm sure you're trying to, we're defensive players are taught to plaster, get your hands on the way. He probably pulled away. On first down, it's a meeting of the minds, if you will, there at midfield. Carson on the carry. He'll be shy of the 50, so a gain of about three. That interior play in there between those offensive and defensive lines starting to get a little chippy in there as those guys are uh, been battling as those linemen have been known to do. Check it. They're going to spot the ball on the pirate side of the 50, so the, into the under the 49-yard line. Lopez off his back foot, throws to a receiver, and that's the inaccuracy we saw early on. Intended receiver was Bird. Intended for Bird. I think... Lopez will try to put it somewhere where only his receiver could have made a play on it, but unfortunately could not keep it in bounds for his receiver. So a big third down here. Need to get to about the Pirate 43 yard line for a first down are the Lions. Three receiver sets, single receiver at the top. Carson 
in the backfield. Additional blocker. Pirates bring a delay blitz. Lopez is going to run with it, and he will be very close to the marker. Very close. They're going to mark him at the 45 and just going to be maybe a yard and a half short. Great prediction because that is exactly where they put it. Looks like North Alabama has thoughts of going for this here on fourth down. Yeah, the offense stays on the field. We're still two minutes remaining here, or just under two minutes remaining here in the third quarter. So can't say this play will be a deciding factor, but it's still an important play here on fourth and short. Lopez will hand off to Carson. Carson is wrapped up in the backfield, and it looks like he will be stonewalled. Oral Vasarian as well as, I'm trying to get the number, I think it was number four. That's Brown, the D DB. Give Vasarian the credit for the initial contact and give Brown credit for cleaning up the mess. And you know who else deserved credit on that play, that defensive line. They were able to get penetration and not let that ball get downhill on with those pullers and everything coming around. They knocked the ball off track and, and kept it clear for Vasarian and Miller to come in and make that play. So great job by that defense. That defensive line did a good job of, of, of setting, a, setting a new line of scrimmage and playing on the other side. Pirates, offense will return to the field. Great field position here. Ball spotted on their own 45-yard line. See if the Pirates will take a shot here. Handoff to the big back in McKenzie, and he breaks through two tackles into Lion territory, and that is a prototypical McKenzie uh, carry. Runs through a couple arm tackles, stumbles forward, uses that wide frame, picks up seven yards on the run. And punishes the tackler. Again, they're dialing up another pressure here. Pirates see it, and they, they're going to check out, hopefully, to a, a blitz-friendly play. It's part of the veteran leadership the Pirates have with a quarterback with the seasoning of DeAndre Francois. Hands back off to McKenzie. He's got the first down near the 40-yard line. Tackle made by number 36 of North Alabama. That's Cummings. Cummings next time need to make sure you pay his bus fare for that ride he just went on. Shot <laughs> McKenzie lowered the boom running through that hole. 38 seconds and counting on the game clock, so the Pirates will have to run one more play here this quarter. And more importantly, with the Pirates successfully being able to run the ball here, the clock continues to run. They lead by eight. First and 10 ball on the 40. They go back to McKenzie. No, Francois on a keeper, and he's going to run out of bounds, avoid the uh, contact right at the 36-yard line. Smart play by the quarterback there. We talked about the sliding earlier. This time, Wise just gets what he can, gets out of bounds, avoids the contact. And that play is going to take us to the fourth quarter. Yeah, the final three seconds will tick away here in Armstrong Stadium with the Hampton Pirates with possession lead 23 to 15. You're watching ESPN Plus. We'll be back with more Big South football after the break. That was terrifying. <laughs> Running wild with Bear Grylls. New season Tuesday, November 5th at 10 on National Geographic. We are back with the fourth quarter here in Hampton, Virginia. The Hampton Pirates had some momentum towards the end of the third quarter. Hope to bring it here into the fourth. North Alabama trying to stifle the Pirates here and complete the comeback. Throw to the end zone. Intercepted as Francois threw into triple coverage. Return man across the 20 to the 30, up the sideline to the 40, for it's finally brought down near midfield. And... I don't know what happened on that play, but it was not one, not two, but three DBs were back there waiting and intercepted the ball right at the goal line and were able to bring it back here to uh, midfield. Francois is just making poor reads versus this uh, cover four defense. I think any quarterback who's played against it knows uh, when you run verticals like that, you're going to have that many defenders back there. He had the comeback route to the weak side with um, Bonds. Um, I'm sure that probably should have been some type of post from the inside receiver so that you can create the one-on-one -on -one outside. But if you don't see that receiver run the post and take that safety out of the picture, you just got to find another, your check down or pull it down and run. Uh, that's the second bad decision that has cost this pirate offense by. Lopez on the play action. 
Goes to the sideline, has a man. His tight end makes a tiptoe catch along the sideline. That's pa oh, excuse me. That is Swan. Swan on the reception. And just like that, the momentum has swung completely in the direction of the Lions. Pirates were looking like they were moving down the field, an opportunity to make it a two-score game. And just like that, the Lions find themselves knocking on the door. They throw it to the end zone. Touchdown, North Alabama. And that's the difference in quarterback play from Lopez. That was a perfect pass. Put it right there in the bread basket for his fullback, Jacob Terry, on the uh, seam route out the, uh, out the backfield. Great job by Lopez. Great catch by his fullback, Perry. Uh, I don't think that's much of oh, Sorry, Jacob Terry. As now they look like they're going to go for two to tie this thing up. And the momentum just like that completely in favor of the Lions. Trail 20 to 2. Now are a two point conversion away from tying the game here at 23. Man in motion. Lopez in the shotgun. He's going to fake the pitch. He's going to try and run to the outside. It's a broken play. He's going to throw it to the back of the end zone, and it's incomplete. incomplete so Hampton still leads here in the fourth quarter. But all you can say is, wow. <laughs> One of the things. Uh, and here we'll go here and take a media timeout with the Pirates up 23-21 here in the fourth. We're back here in the fourth quarter. And as I was saying before we went to the break, TL, only one word can describe what we've seen these last two quarters is just wow. Yeah. You talk about a tail of two halves. Hampton led 20-2 to two at halftime and since then, 19 on well 19 to 3 run if you will for North Alabama and Hampton holding on to this lead by the slimmest of margins they were able to stop they were able to stop North Alabama from converting the two point conversion nice end over end kick Easton will field it at the 5 across the 15 to the 20 got a little room here across the 30 we got a flag so across the 40 to the 41 yard line is the return, but the flag will more than likely go against Hampton. During the return, the return, holding, holding, number 41, number 41. Return, team. return team, 10 yard, 10 yard penalty. Hold charge to David Ola, the linebacker. So I believe it's 10 yards from the spot of the foul. So instead of having the ball at about the 40, you're looking at now inside the 15 yard line. And I just think this this drive, uh, Francois has to be better with making decisions throwing that ball. He's made some costly mistakes um, here that have come back to hurt. That was a 14-point swing there on a bad throw and a bad read, I'll say, on that last series. Robinson will get the carry across the 20, 25, 30, still on his feet, brought down near the 35-yard line. And that's one way to get the offense going. And we've got an injured lion. While the medical staff attends, remind you, this Big, South, this Big South Network broadcast is brought to you in part by GEICO. Big South alumni could save even more with an alumni discount from GEICO. Visit geico.com slash Big South today. Marriott the official hotel partner of the Big South Conference and Sun Belt Rentals. We have equipment for that. And the injured lion was DeAndre Hart, the safety who's played a phenomenal game here today for North Alabama. Hopefully he's okay. And it was just a bit of a stinger the way Robinson was brought down, almost kind of landed on top of him as they spun around. Yeah. Um, he was able to jog off the field on his own power, so that's always a good sign. So he'll probably back, be back in after getting checked out on the sideline. Um, but the Pirates definitely need something going this drive. Same play again to Robinson. He'll get the ball about two yards downfield to the 40. 
And again, uh, Christian Lopez, this second half has been the big story, the big difference in this ball game. His ability to be efficient in the air has made a difference. You look at the end of the first half, they had only 30 yards passing, had 110 yards alone in that third quarter. Francois in the shotgun on second down, looks to throw. Under pressure, throws over the middle. It's tipped and intercepted off the hand of the receiver. And he's still up across the 20. There's a flag into the end zone on the touchdown. But is the interception will stand, but it's going to be a penalty on North Alabama. So. Tough break there for Hampton as the pass hit. I believe it was Stanley right in the hands if we take a look at the replay. And Stanley just couldn't squeeze it. And great ability there by Dredd to uh, keep his momentum and awareness to hold on to it. And somehow kept his balance up the right sideline. But we'll just attribute that to the illegal blindside block. And it'll be first and 10 here for North Alabama at the Hampton 37-yard line. Yeah, you got to make that catch. It was a little bit not the best pass. It was a little bit, but when your hands touch the ball, you're taught as a receiver. You got to make those plays. Lopez. And North Alabama got a little too cute with that play. I'm not quite sure. They were doing a lot of misdirection. But the Pirate D-line got penetration, and Lopez was fortunate. He didn't take a loss of about 10 yards when he came out of that spin. I agree, but Lopez is looking like he has a little bit of that Baker Mayfield magic going on back there. You see him move around in the pocket, um, finding some open guys. And, and, again, the second half, he's been – on the money for the most part with orchestrating his offense. Carson on the carry is going to turn the corner. He's got first down yardage down to about the 16 yard line. And a great run on the ground for is that Carson. And the Pirates there not able to set the edge um, and allowing Carson to get outside and turn the corner. As the Pirates take a timeout here, they're going to want to talk this over to uh, make some adjustments and see what they can do to kind of slow down this North Alabama offense. So talk about a complete swing in momentum. Even though that interception will be attributed to Francois, the pass hit the receiver right in the hand and Dredd just able to pluck it out of the sky. Well, there's a lot happened on that play that, that a lot of people, you'll look at the stat sheet and you'll just see the interception. But the pressure that kind of forced the, the throw not to be where it needed to be for uh, Francois, I mean for Stanley, is um, so the Pirates here are going to really – um, have to come up with something here. They're going to have to try to slow this offense down and try to keep them to a field goal attempt. But on that play, you saw the pressure from the defense, the force, um, a, not a great throw from Francois, which then uh, bounced off Stanley's hand. So there was a lot of things that went wrong that they still haven't figured out. But North Alabama has realized that they pressure Francois. They feel like if they get to him and they can make him uneasy in the pocket, he's going to make some poor throws. Back to action. Lopez brought down from behind. Sack made by Marr. And the clock continues to tick here. 12 minutes remaining. We'll bring up second down. Loss of about five, six yards there. And that was big for the Pirates because, again, I think one of the weaknesses that for the Pirates this year has been defending the pass and you can see that um, North Alabama has found a way to exploit the Pirates in the passing game Lopez goes to the end zone pass way off the mark third down clock will stop at 1134 
Big third down here for the Pirates. And North Alabama was lucky there not to get called for the P.I. on a push off. Yeah. Um, but I guess they see the hand fight and they let they let it go on that play, which I'm OK with it as an um, as a former player, as a defensive back. Uh, let us get a little contact in there. Third down and 15. Lopez with some time. He's going to set his feet toward the end zone. He's got a man touchdown over the middle. And the catch made by number 11, Little. And North Alabama completes a 25-point comeback. Wow. 25 points here in this second half. The only two points North Alabama scored. Oh, no, no. North Alabama's only two points came on the um, botched uh, extra point attempt from Hampton. So, wow. 27-23. North Alabama looking to go for two here. And again, I'll argue the end, just the play of Lopez. Christian Lopez has been uh, phenomenal here in this second half, making all the throws, making all the right, pushing all the right buttons, making all the right decisions, um, throwing the ball in the air. And he's been able to effectively Lopez throws, and it's intercepted! An opportunity for Hampton to answer. He's got a, He's got room here. Coming back with it is Brown. And talk about turnabout being fair play. Hampton gave up two points on a box extra point. Here, Lopez, just as you're crediting him, gave him a bad throw, and there's a flag way back near the 30-yard line. Wow. They're going to need to talk about this one. I will be interested to see this. On, and I'm thinking it might be on North Alabama on the pick play. I think they're, they're calling off. Yeah, he's pointing at North Alabama. So he's making the offensive pass interference motion. Because yeah. they ran a pick route and they fought through it. And I saw that on the pick route, on the flat route from the back. They... You're allowed to run a route and pick a defender, but you're not allowed to forcibly go and make contact if you're not running a route. And that's what you saw. The Pirates just were able to fight through it and come underneath and make a great play on that out route. This game has been one to remember. How many times do you see a team score on a botched extra point attempt, but then to see each team score <laughs> In similar manners, this was an inter, uh, basically a, a pick two, if you will, <laughs> where here uh, for early in the first quarter, North Alabama picked up basically a fumble and returned it 80-plus yards. So I'll ask you this, T.O., with the score being at 23-27, what did a two-point conversion do there for North Alabama? It still would have just been a one-touchdown Still six points, it's right? It's six points, but now they need the extra point for the win. So it's 28-23. I'm sorry, it would have been 29-23. That's a touchdown. So if Hampton scores, they need the extra point. So you still have a chance to at least stay in the game. Okay. Just kicking the extra point makes it five points, and the, right. the touchdown wins. I understood. So now it's a, just a two-point a two game. So a field goal from Hampton gives them the lead and could give them the victory. Um, here. Well, let's see if that positivity on the pick two will <laughs> carry over here for this Pirates offense. Last few drives have not ended the way they wanted to. And the kick from Gurley end over end will be fielded at the two by Easton across the 20. Got a block across the 30. Still on his feet. And no flags this time. None that we see. <laughs> <laughs> But that's what you love about college football uh, and the NFL. If you intercept the ball on a two-point conversion, the play is dead. It's over. It's just the interception. The play ends. In college, you get that extra excitement of trying to run it back and get those points. Well, excitement is definitely the word for today. The first meeting for these teams in almost in over 20 years, and. Hampton with an opportunity to regain the lead here with the possession. They're going to hand it off to Robinson. He'll cross 
the 30 down at the 35 yard line. And the clock and the clock will continue to run here and the uh, clock will begin to be uh, an important footnote in this fourth quarter as time begins to tick away here, T.O. And I think it's going to be important for both teams here. If Hampton can get a score here, you don't want to score and not leave enough time for yourself to maybe get another score if needed. But you also don't want to um, leave Lopez with so much time because right now he's hot. And um, I think you want to make sure he has his, the, the least amount of time as possible to score. So um, it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out here down the stretch. Bonds has the first down on forward progress. So ball now at the Pirate 41-yard line. First and 10, 10.28 to go. Francois in the shotgun. Goes back to Robinson. Robinson will dance. Tried to jump over a defender and was tackled from behind. Gain of about four, depending on the spot. And Will Robinson has been an eff effective in here. I'm curious as to when we're going to see Shy McKenzie because he's the past couple series. He hasn't had gotten the call as much as you probably would have thought he had with the success he's had running the ball. Second down and eight. Play action. Francois under pressure. Able to avoid it. Got it to Stanley. First down and some down the field across the 40 to the 30. And a tough tackle brought down right at the ankles. Stanley somehow bounced right back off his feet the way he went down. I thought he might have been hurt. But two... Great displays of athleticism. The first by Francois. Looked like he was about to get sacked for a loss and then gets the ball to his tight end. Robinson, though, will be tied up at the line of scrimmage if he's lucky. And he'll bring up second down. And I'm curious as to if something's wrong with Shy McKenzie or uh, maybe the strategy of what they're trying to do with the running game because now Will Eason is subbed in. And no knock against Will Easton. He's a, a fantastic player in his own. But your bail Cal has been McKenzie. And he's kind of been um, a no-show here in these past couple of series. It's going to be second down. Francois looks over the defense, throws to the right, has Bonds, makes the catch along the sideline, stays in bounds, makes a move on the defender inside the 15-yard line. And another first down for the Pirates. It's like the Pirates, just like, they're like that boxer. You know, they've got knocked down, but they just keep keep throwing punches. They keep standing in the fight. So the officials will determine if Jadakiss was able to stay in bounds after making the catch. And while we got a break here, we'll take a look at the Sunbelt Reynolds out-of-town scoreboard. And as we reported earlier in a final, Campbell knocks off Presbyterian 28-14. Mid uh, near the end of the second quarter, Gardner Webb and Western Carolina all tied up at 14. Then kicking off in uh, just over an hour, Monmouth will be on Staten Island taking on Wagner, and the Savannah State Tigers will be headed to Charleston, South Carolina, and be uh, hosted by Charleston Southern at Buccaneer Field. So a lot of exciting action still going on here in the Big South. You're watching a matchup here of the of the two newest members of the conference. This is their first game since the early 90s, about 25, 26 years ago. Yeah, when both teams were Division II teams playing, their matchups were in the playoffs, so that gives you kind of a sense of the history behind both of these programs. Oh, yes. You know, Hampton was known as a Division II power under then-coach Ed Taylor, uh, excuse me, Joe Taylor. And North Alabama had been a Division II power up until very recently. <laughs> so a lot of people thought it was a good decision for the Lions to make that transition to Division I. And they are a football affiliate member of the Big South, along with Monmouth, the other affiliate member in football. 
And I think they'll make a great addition because this, as you can see from what we've. Review, the runner stepped out of bounds with the ball at the 17 yard line. Where he placed it back to Clark. First down for Hampton. For Hampton. Be the clock should be reset. 10 minutes 30 seconds. And before you finish that point, the other affiliate member, Kennesaw State, wanted to get that out and go ahead. Yeah. Now I'm going to say, you can just see from what you're watching out here on the field today, they're, they're a good program, Hampton. So the Big South has made some great choices in the teams they brought in for the football aspect. Um, and they've really, I think, going to make a difference in making this conference that much stronger um, and that much of a power in the FCS uh, landscape. Back to action here. It's first down. They go to Easton out of the backfield. He'll be hit right at the 15-yard line. Two Lions there making the stop. Leading the way was Dread. And those linemen got to get out there a little bit quicker um, on that screen. Easton was looking for a lane, but the linemen didn't get out there fast enough to set it up, which kept that play from being as um, productive as it could have been. 23 seconds on the play clock as Hampton looks to Make an adjustment here at the line of scrimmage right now. Showing four wide. Jedekas Bonds at the top of the formation. Cortez Lewis here to the bottom. And it will be a keeper, or maybe that's what they intended it to be, but a great adjustment there by the D-line of North Alabama. And Francois had no opportunity to uh, turn that into anything positive. Well, they, they kind of brought a little pressure. And I think that's what he saw. So he, they figured if they could get could create a crease in there, um, the, the, because the back half will be in man to man, they would have a lane there for him to run it in. But North Alabama did a good job of cutting down those lanes and able to stop him for a loss. Third down, Parson to get about to the eight yard line, I think, here for a new set of downs. Francois looks right over the middle, has Bonds. Bonds will have enough for the first down. The ball came out, but he was. Definitely down. But the officials are actually this. I like this by the officials because they're taught to let plays play out and then they can go to replay if they need to overturn it. But you don't want to stop the play there and then this is a turnover and now the, it, you can't let the turnover happen because you blew the play there. Really on the field. It's the ball. 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 So we're going to take a look at the replay here. Bonds clearly makes the catch. He has it in his hands. He spun around. See, I don't know if there's enough to overturn it. Because right there, you see his back on the ground, and the ball hadn't come out, but you can't tell yeah, if he has possession. If he has possession, so it's not enough to overturn it, which is why the initial call is crucial, which is the only reason why I say I don't – What's your, your statement earlier? I can't always lean on that because if you don't have the, you don't, not every stadium has the ability to give you all the vantage points you need. So without a camera on that opposite side of the field, you can't tell if he had it or not, which then makes that ruling on the field so crucial. And I, and I don't disagree with you there. I, that part I definitely understand. But I think as a, you see fans get upset and when you're when your team that happens to your team and they blow it dead and you don't get a chance to right. at least recover it. So it's one of those things you kinda have to I think you have to let the play happen like that in order for it to be as fair as possible to right. both teams. And I'll give you that as fair as possible. I just don't wanna always have officials just using replay as a potential get out of jail free card. Like, oh well replay got it. Well, replay is not always gonna get every angle that's needed to make the right call. But as it stands right now, it is first and 10 from the 20 for the Lions with an opportunity to try and milk the clock and maybe ice this game with a successful long drive. I concur. Um, and this is going to be probably the biggest call of this game based on how, that, how the replay sees it. Um, hopefully there are other angles that can confirm whether or not he had possession. Um, but... Like I say, from our vantage point, it did look like he was down by contact before the ball popped free. The ground caused the fumble. Uh, but, again, I, I commend the officials for for at least giving the chance to play out so that you can at least have a fair possibility of, of the possession being in the right hands. Officials still discussing. Looks like they're breaking the huddle now. 
Yeah, if, with this taking this long, I'm assuming he's going they're gonna figure out what's the field position in the play clock. And you know what's funny? Full transparency. If you go, unless there are, with the caveat, there are other angles that we can't see. I've disagreed with both rulings based on the replay. <laughs> I thought the uh, replay to the challenge near the goal line early on should have been uh, overturned and been called a catch. And I think if you go by the letter of the rule, that should have been called a fumble because you can't tell if he was down and still had control of the ball. But nonetheless, we are back to action here. Francois throws to the end zone to Catlett. He makes the initial catch. The official singles touchdown, Hampton. No flags? <laughs> <laughs> with the way this game was going, I wouldn't have been surprised there had been one out there. But I agree with what you're saying with the angles. But like you said, we see just the angles we have. That there may be a couple. That's why I gave that caveat. But yeah. I almost, if you go by the, the rule, you can't, there, was not, there wasn't enough evidence that we could see to overturn the call on the field. So based on what I saw, I you couldn't argue that it wasn't a fumble. I, I agree with that. I agree with that 100%. <laughs> I also think one of the things we start you start to learn as you watch this process, when those officials take longer under the hood, a lot of times they're not just talking about as the Pirates line up here for the two-point conversion. Francois will send Bonds in motion. Francois is going to roll throw to him, and the two-point conversion is good, but finish your prior point. I'm going to say, um, when they, they stay under that hood that long, we're learning that they're trying to get field position, uh, field position information and clock time as we get ready to go here for break. Um, 6.49 here to go in the fourth. Pirates up 33-27. You're watching Big South Football on ESPN+. Plus. And you're back here on ESPN Plus with the great debate of replay <laughs> and how it is executed, featuring Matt White and Travis Oliver. No, but welcome back here where it has been. <laughs> I don't think exciting is strong enough of a word <laughs> to describe what we've seen here in the second half. Hampton and North Alabama are going to have one to remember after this final 649 took away. Another kick out of bounds penalty will be charged against Hampton. And that just tells you the kind of respect that the Pirates have for the return team of North Alabama, that they would rather give them field position at their 35 consistently or thereabout than kick it deep and go 11 on 11 on special teams. I agree. I agree. Um, and that's, you know, they've had some troubles with covering kicks. So maybe they see that and know how well that North Alabama returns the ball off their kickoffs. But this is going to be an interesting game as we've been going back and forth here in this second half. Now Lopez with a chance to try to give his team the lead. Lopez falling away, throws it up. Was looking for his tight end, big number 87 Swan, a name we've said several times. But he had a couple men in blue chasing or nipping at the heels of the quarterback, did Lopez. Fortunate enough, he was able to get it away. Yeah, Swan has shown himself to be an, an effective weapon here for, for Lopez, uh, running some really good routes, really good hand. He has great size. Uh, and a, as a tight end for a quarterback, that's always a good safety blanket uh, when you get pressure. Lopez, feeling the pressure, will roll to his right. He's pointing downfield, makes a throw, and way off the mark intended for PV. And one thing I think we consistently say, Lopez, when he has time and can get his feet set, can make any throw. But when you force him out of the pocket and he's got to be moving, not quite the same quarterback. And that's really the interesting part about him as a, as a mobile quarterback. Those guys tend to be better on the move. Um, but when he, can, he sits back there, he's been accurate. So 
you see the Pirates really trying to get pressure and, and move them off his spots. Big third down here. Swan will go in motion. Lopez under duress has a wide open receiver and couldn't hit him. There was a breakdown in coverage as two DBs for Hampton, Catlett and I believe Valdez are discussing what just transpired. Fortunately for Hampton, Lopez couldn't connect with Boykin. Boykin's still running if he if that <laughs> if that ball is on target. And that looked familiar to the play to start the second half where Boykin was the, the recipient of a play like that. It looked like when the mo they had a coverage set here to the boundary, and it looked like uh Valdez expected um expected the safety, Justin Brown, to be over the top. Girly. Justin Justin Brown saw the tight end, adjusted the coverage, and he never told Valdez. So Valdez was playing a cover two coverage, thinking he had safety help over the top. Catlett calls for the fair catch. Another good, strong punt from Gurley. And while if you're a North Alabama fan, you didn't like the fact it was a three and out, you have to like the fact that only about 20 seconds came off the clock with all of the uh, – with three incomplete passes. So still a lot of time here, an opportunity for your defense to potentially force their own three and out and give your offense another opportunity to get back out of here on the field. And here's where, you know, a lot of fans get frustrated with offense because they kind of get stagnant as they go more conservative. And there's an opportunity here for Will Robinson. While the idea is to keep the clock running, I think any coach or any fan will love it when the tailback is able to break off about a 30-plus yard run practically untouched until he was deep into the secondary. And it looked for a minute he had a step. <laughs> he had a step on the safety as he was going to take that one home. But DeAndre Hart able to come back in, and um, he was kind of banged up a little early and make a play on that on uh, Robinson down the sideline. Yeah, glad to see Hart back out on the field for the Lions. And you'll see Hampton here not rush. To get the playoff, they will be more than happy to, to just take a timeout here and let some of this clock tick away. The official here making the call before you realize that <laughs> Hampton called the timeout. <laughs> well. Well, Hampton was a little non nonchalant in calling the timeout. But the official then needs to blow the whistle and let them know there's a timeout. But this is where fans get frustrated with a lot of their teams, their, their teams they support in this situation because you're up. You want to run clock, but you want to be effective. Um, so you don't want to get conservative and stagnant. Well, we got this break. For the best in Big South coverage, visit BigSouthSports.com. Stay current with the latest news, results, stats, standings, and much more. Enjoy video features showcasing remarkable student athletes or connect to school sites or social media outlets all from one place. Remember, the source for all your conference information is BigSouthSports.com. As we return to action here, first and 10 at the 47-yard line. Look for the Pirates to keep it on the ground. Robinson going to go to the left side. Blocker or two. Pick up over by the yard. Clock continues to tick as we are near the five-minute mark. And there are no rush, but you definitely want to get the play in and and this is the only thing I hate in this situation because you call a play, and, and if your offense is a check with me offense, you call a play, and when you call that play, you're stuck with it. You can't check out of it. And this is where the Pirates are going to find themselves in these situations. Francois takes a snap. Going to have to tuck it and run. Nice move up the middle, and he'll slide. Should be a flag there as there was contact made well after he went into the sliding motion, but nonetheless, it will be a third and short here. They're going to mark him about a yard, just a half yard shy of the first down. I think they, they probably judged it wasn't malicious. He was just trying to avoid. He, he did dive over to avoid him. 
um, and it didn't do it. It wouldn't have. It didn't hurt him or it didn't cause any malicious intent. So, big third down here, third and short. Hampton needs to get to the North Alabama 43-yard line, and DeAndre will run it, and he should have the first down pretty easily. And he does. You like the misdirection. They sent players in different directions, getting the defense to have to adjust and just created a little bit extra space there. And Francois, right up the middle, moves the chains first down. And now North Alabama has to consider using those timeouts as this clock is ticking down. Remember, um, here we don't have the two-minute warning and all those stuff like you get in the NFL. So that clock is running as long as the Pirates can keep the ball on the ground. Yeah, and that's why you probably won't see Hampton look to attempt to pass unless they have to. Snap, handoff Robinson up the middle to about the 40, so give him about two yards. And they're going to use the first time out here in North Alabama. And this is what you want to see if you're the part. You want them to use those timeouts. It's the first timeout called by North Alabama, as you said. So we take a look at next week for both teams. Hampton will be in North Carolina down at Gardner-Webb. It's a 130 kick. That game will be here for you on ESPN+. Plus. Next week, a bye week for North Alabama. So they get a chance to rest after traveling cross country from the friendly confines of the great state of Alabama up here to the Commonwealth. And I know they probably weren't prepared for this weather either. Um, you got to commend them for coming out here and being prepared to play because it definitely cooled off here today as it's been warm for the better part of the week. And here Friday and today, it kind of dipped. Yeah, it was a hot one earlier this week. As we said earlier, probably it was definitely north of 90, which is unseasonably warm for coastal Virginia. But here kicking off, it was right at 69 degrees. So quite the drastic drop in temperature. 324 on the clock, Francois under pressure, taking his time, he's gonna throw. He's got Jenny Kisbons wide open for a touchdown. And that might just do it. As, De as DeAndre Francois calmly in the pocket, had the one-on-one -on -one coverage he wanted, and big number 81. Wide open, in stride, makes the catch. So we take another look at it here from the sideline cam. Bonds catches it at the six, and it's easy sailing on in for six. And we talked about during one of the breaks, one of the ways you attack the cover four defense is your inside receiver runs that dig route to clear out the safety. The outside receiver is going to run the post, so you have one-on-one -on -one coverage with the corner who's sitting in outside leverage. He's running away from the corner. And that gives him that easy throw there that you just saw there. I surprised the Pirates didn't go to it earlier, but maybe they were holding it for this situation. They knew something we didn't know. And the extra point is up and good. And what has been maybe the most electric second half I've seen in college football. 40 to 27, the Pirates have put 20 points up here in the fourth quarter. And yeah, the Pirates really facing adversity, you know, down 27-23 before they got that two-point conversion run back off the interception. Pick two. Pick two. I'm Pick sorry. Two. I'm Pick trying to coin two. that. <laughs> so, yeah, they got that play, and since then, they've kind of just been rolling along um, offensively. You know, they had the, the couple of play, I think it was back-to-back -back interceptions by Francois. And you kind of got a little worried with some of the decision making. Um, and here, um, this, and here in this fourth quarter, he's kind of turned it around and found his stride. And now the Pirates just have to, you know, really just get this one drive under under command because you know the um, North Alabama is going to try to score quick. So you got to eliminate. And we've the big seen play. them score a touchdown in less than 20 seconds this half. Yeah, so you have to eliminate the big play if you're the Pirates. Keep everything in front. And I, I hate, I am an uh, opponent of prevent defense, so I hope they don't, you know, you don't go out there and play defense in this situation. I know if I'm in North Alabama, I hope you do play prevent because a lot of, you get yardage quick in that way and you can get a quick score. 
Another kick to the sideline. And first and 10 from the 35 for North Alabama. And I wonder, is that the strategy there? Because you, normally you see when that happens, if that's not the intention, oh, as the, the they kind of come to the kickers and, and say something. But now we're going to take a break here with 317 left in the fourth quarter. Pirates leaving 40-27. Welcome back to Armstrong Stadium as we have North Alabama with the big run here looking to try to bring this within the one score. Bit of a screen play, able to spring Howell. Big pickup on the, uh, through the air. Under three minutes to go, hurry up offense, Lopez drops back, pump fakes. Throws it deep, he's got a man. Catch is made, but I believe out of bounds. Swan made a great adjustment on the ball, but again, quarterback just couldn't keep the ball in bounds. And I'm, I, um, that had a chance to be big if they ran a double move on the outside with Swan, uh, but the defensive backs have to keep those plays in front of them because uh, if, if uh, Lopez can make a better throw there, He's in the end zone, and just like that, they're back within one score. Second down. Man in motion. Swan takes a shotgun. Looks over the middle to the middle of the field. Nearly intercepted. Swan makes another play. Tackle made by Hampton number 12. That's Brown. But Zarian couldn't have been in better position. He read it. He drove it. But Swan... Has been having a, a, a heck of a game so far. Made a great catch. Yeah. Swan right now playing the Rob Gronkowski role. Lopez drops back. Throws to the end zone. And it's a touchdown. And now you don't need to. You just kick the extra point here. That makes it a six-point game. What an impressive display there by Swan. Just made a great move, got open. Great throw there from Lopez. We've been riding him about his throws. That time he made a great throw, and his receiver rewards him with the catch. So 40 to 33. In this second half, um, I, can't, I can't say enough about the way Lopez has performed. He's, um, he's been hitting all the right notes here. Snap down is blocked. It's recovered, though. By Swan. <laughs> Who else? <laughs> Wherever the ball is at, he's just there finding There is a it. flag thrown. So someone lined up offsides. They did give a number. But I believe the block came from the middle from Viserion. So I don't know if he was the culprit. But half the distance to the goal, and you get to re-kick. And it was a false start that time. So the officials will discuss this one. I saw what looked like movement on the O-line, but of course, everyone's pointing at each other down there. <laughs> It's never their fault. It's always the other guy's fault. <laughs> so they're going to... So another penalty on Hampton. So this will be our third attempt on the extra point. Snap down, good penetration 
but the kick is good. 218 remaining. Six points. The difference. And I don't even think the Pirates on that last drive were playing prevent defense. I just think they they weren't playing defense on the back end. Um, they gave up a couple big passes or a couple big opportunities for passing in the passing game um, where North Alabama, North Alabama was just able to take advantage of the mistakes that the Pirates are making. Um, and again, how hot Lopez has been in this second half, um, he's well over 300 yards passing with a good chunk of it, if not if all of it coming here in this second half and a lot of it now coming on that drive. Pirates now have to get their hands team out there to be prepared for this onside kick attempt, which I'm sure is coming. Do you go for the onside kick here too soon? No, you have to. Timeouts against you. You've used you've used your timeouts on the previous drive to to get in this situation. Um, I think you have no other choice. The Pirates' offense right now is clicking. You haven't been able to stop it. Pirates will have the hands team out. Gurley has it lined up at the 35. It has to get to the 45 for it to be a live football. Whistle, get the all clear, and it's a nice kick, and it bounces off a Hampton Pirate, and it's recovered by North Alabama. He can't advance it, though, and they have a penalty flag down, so I'm thinking someone's offside. It bounced right off Catlett's chest as he tried to catch it. And not only did you point out the flag on the play, but Coach Robert Prunty was running and pointing to it. But that was a great execution by the kicker. He kicked the type of ball you want, hard to, hard to possess. Officials are still in their huddle. And North Alabama is re retreating back. They're going to say it was on heart. Well, I'm not a fan of this setup that uh, Hampton is using here either because you typically want another person here deep behind your, your first wall just in case the ball seeps through. You want to protect the far side as well in case they try some type of trick where they fake it this way and go back there. But you want a guy back here behind um, your hands team just in case the ball slips through like it did on that previous play. Took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> I say like it did on the last attempt. Ball has been backed up to the 30-yard line. So now the ball has to get to the 40. And Curly's kick is going to curve. It hit a North Alabama player, so it was technically dead. Well, they're going to get a flag on that for illegal touching. Right. The Hamptons recovered it, so they're going to get the penalty on top of recovering the ball as well, on top of where the position, field position is. So. Yeah, you can. Can't take my hat off to Gurley enough on those two kicks. I mean, the second one didn't go quite the way you wanted, but he kicked the it's first. It's an inaccurate science. <laughs> <laughs> he put the first one just like you practice it. He, I'm sure, the coaches that they've been working on, he kicked the first one exactly how you would want that ball to look. To look. And the way it bounced. Offside, offside. Number, 40, number 44. So not only was it an illegal touch, as you so uh, eloquently pointed out, someone else lined up offside. So that was so there were two penalties on that play, <laughs> and the illegal touch erases the offsides. <laughs> so you got to get out your rule book and know that one beats two, but two doesn't beat three when it's the blue moon on the sixth <laughs> Sunday of the month. So with all that, Hampton has secured the possession, but my prior point was going to be, uh, again, to Gurley's execution. It hit Catlett right in the chest. It was a perfect kick. For, unfortunately for North Alabama, just couldn't quite secure it legally. And the run there for McKenzie, who seems to be okay, this is the type of scenario where you want McKenzie to come in. That bowling ball just going to run into this defense. And now North Alabama should be. 
She, I'm say should be running out of timeouts, so they'll use it here. They'll use one more timeout, and then they'll be out of timeouts. And the Pirates will be looking at this point to run away, to run out the clock, or at least get it as close to out of time as possible with maybe getting a field goal attempt. But this has been a, a very entertaining ball game, to say the least. Uh, you, the way it started with North Alabama kind of just looking like they were awestruck when they first got out here, 20-2 uh, to two at half. The Pirates looked like they were on their way to kind of just running away with this game. But Lopez came out in the second half and really took charge of this offense. I mean, he made the plays they needed, to, they needed him to make in order to get back in and take the lead at times in this game. So it's going to bring up now second and seven. One timeout remaining for North Alabama. We have a whistle. A timeout called by Hampton. And that's Hampton's last timeout. Apparently they didn't like something um, that was going on offensively versus the the defense they were going to get from North Alabama. Take a look at the Sun Belt Reynolds out-of-town scoreboard while we got this break in. Just under nine minutes in the third quarter, Gardner Webb with a 21-14 lead over Western Carolina. Gardner Webb just scored, and the extra point was good, so a strong out-of-conference matchup there for Gardner Webb, who will actually be hosting the Pirates next week. Down there in Boiling Springs. Boiling Springs, North Carolina. I've been there before. Actually, Hampton played Gardner Webb. Wow, almost 14, 15 years ago. Hampton was able to come away with that victory. Yeah, Pirates I've... taking a shot here. Bonds, they're going to say the catch was made inbounds. Bonds. And that might have iced the game there with only having one timeout. North Alabama can stop it, but they wouldn't be able to stop it again if they would the Pirates run the ball. So that was, I like the call because you're expecting them to run it. It was a safe call because it's going to the sideline. You can throw the ball out. You want to throw it towards the sideline where he can only get it. So the clock is ticking here with 140. The last 100 seconds of the game and Hampton holding on by six. Led by as many as 18 the start of the third quarter. And since then, North Alabama has come alive. McKenzie runs straight ahead, and you know he's trying to secure that ball as every person in purple and gold trying to claw that ball loose. And I believe North Alabama just took their final timeout with 121 remaining here in the ballgame. Timeout. Please receive the game Excuse me, they're going to put two seconds back on, so 123 remaining. And barring a miracle here, if, if maybe if they can get the ball, they can cause a fumble or something like here, the Pirates are looking like they're going to walk away with the W here and improve to 3-2 and two with North Alabama dropping the 2-4. and four. Both teams will break their respective huddles. Both teams out of timeouts. And the Pirates will line up in victory formation. And Francois will take the first knee. It's the clock will tick away. Those of you who may be interested, just some, I guess, might as well take a look at some other stuff. Auburn losing to Florida right now down in the swamp. Gator bait. Yeah, some of our Alabama Watt viewers may be interested in that. I believe uh, associate head coach for Alabama is a uh, Hampton grad and former uh, football, Hampton football player. Yes, Charles Huff. He's down, on, down there with Nick Saban. That's the game of the week right now with that Auburn-Florida game. And 
think right. everybody expected that to be a dog fight. And ha Hampton takes what will be the last snap of the game. It wasn't pretty for either team at stretches, but Hampton able to come away with their first program victory over North Alabama. And will get a much needed win after a tough loss two weeks ago and will then look to head down to North Carolina to get the first regular season conference game under their belt and potentially come away with the victory as we are marching towards the conference season. In three years, this game will have counted for standings, but next year's contest will be the last year of North Alabama's transition. But the final 40 to 34 here in Hampton, for my broadcast colleague, Travis Oliver, for the crew here and everyone here in Virginia, we thank you for tuning in. We'll see you in a few weeks. Good night, everybody.